Hello everyone, McCall here. Welcome to the next episode of Star Trek Adventures, the USS Nighthawk, Starfleet Intelligence Ship. You know, nothing really big on my end except to introduce our new player. I think you're a Contra. It will be joining us and we will meet her character shortly. But in the meantime, I believe that the captain has a rather important captain's log to read. That I do. Captain's log started 82993.6. We have departed from the Scorpi homeworld. The damage that we've done to their society cannot be undone, but assisting them with cultural landmark will hopefully push things back in the right direction. Commander Bashir is still being punished, currently confined to quarters. Commander Helsing has assumed his duties as first officer. Unfortunately, the stellar mapping of the sectors of which the Scorpi's moat enclosed has been put on hold. We've received a distress call from Commander Cruel of the USS Black Shield, another Starfleet intelligence vessel. Currently around the planet Etov, the Black Shield is reporting major damage, and there are Starfleet teams trapped behind enemy lines. I've ordered us to rendezvous with the Black Shield and assist in their evacuation. End log. All right. Uh, so there would be roughly three days travel to get from the Scorpi homeworld to the planet of Etov at maximum warp. Is there anything that you guys wish to do before you reach the system? Reading the hell out of that book that that, that honored matron gave me. Ah, yes. Most of it is a bit sluggish. Uh, most, a lot of it is ancient prophecies. Um, and I will tell you what they are. Probably off, off stream, I think, would be a better way yep. to discuss that for the time being. But yes. That's fair. Most of it is muddlesome at best. Okay. Um, does it seem to be, like, written by a mad lady? Or is it... Like, mm. are the stories consistent and the... They're... Um, it's more of a Nostradamus style of writing of a bunch of mad prophecies that a lot of them sound so generic that they could that their signs could be met in any thousand different permutations. Ooh, I like this. Okay. Yeah. Um, but, and you have enough archaeology background to know that there's probably more than one hand at work in writing this. Hmm. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I'll spend most of my days there and then in the, in the um, worship center. And... Okay. All right. I'm yeah, not here. Jefferson. You know, the usual. Understood. Anyone else wish to do anything for the couple days that they are traveling at warp? Um, I need to talk to the captain for a minute. Okay. Ready room? Up, oh, that'll be good. Okie dokie. Off to the ready room. Captain Sangral, you are busy looking over the tactical reports of the uh, USS Black Shield. Aside from acknowledging their distress signal there's been no further communications from them and there's a chime at your door enter enter commander liam helsing hi sir you got a minute i do what's on your mind um did you read the brief i sent you about operation crouching tiger hidden dragon i did <laughs> Um, I think we might be able to get start on some of those applications um, while we're in route. Some of them might involve uh, having to have a, a minor retrofit at a starbase. Well, by all means, take the resources that you, that, is, that you find necessary, Commander. But in any case, I, things like such as the hollow emitters will probably have to make deal with portable ones until we could get, the, like you said, enough engineering time to implant them within the walls. Other than uh, that, though... I got a couple ideas. We'll do the uh, critical locations first, and probably having to do the holodeck for tours later. Um, what I'll do is I'll get with... Uh, um, uh, Commander for the Shan and the former... I mean, um, is he still commander, or is he just temporarily removed the rank? But our, new, our science officer in exile, and probably have to pull him in for some of the science of it. That's fair. Take all the time you need. 
Also, don't hesitate to use the intelligence database. I mean, there are things in there that are pretty good tips in terms of, you know, confusing the enemy or other people. So, you know, use some, use more, a little bit more than just optical illusion. There's a lot here at your disposal. All right, so I'll, I'll um, pull together some notes and I'll pull together the senior staff and I'll start handing out some assignments. Very well. Put anybody that you feel like is necessary on this project. Will do, sir. Well, is is there anything else, Commander? No, sir. That's it. This will definitely increase the security of the ship. After those boarding actions and other things we've had, it's something I think we need to do. I agree. Well, if there's nothing else, then I'm actually off to crew quarters, if you don't mind. No problem, sir. I got the con. Okay. And where are you off to then, Mr. Singral? I am going to see Commander Bashir in his quarters. Okay. Commander Bashir. Okay. So, Mr. Bashir, it has been roughly uh, two and a half days or so since you're dressing down, and you have been confined to quarters. And then there's uh, Captain Singral, you wander up, and there is a security officer, Miss Loxley, standing watch. She salutes as you come by. I just need to talk to him for a little while. She nods and enters her personal access code into the door unlock mechanism. And I'm going to make my way through. Okay, Bashir. I'll be sitting at my desk. So, how you doing? Okay, Captain. So, what's the life of someone that's actually just confined to quarters? Because, to be quite honest, it's never happened to me. Ooh, salt. <laughs> uh, I've been doing a lot of research and reading. About? Uh, science and um, some protocol. Good save. How about your family? Now you got a little bit of extra free time. Have you been able to catch up with them? No, sir. I don't have much of a family. <laughs> well, I mean... I did look over everybody's, you know, crew reports before they came in. I know it's, there's not much, but you do have at least a few people that you still regularly talk to. Uh, I do t speak to my mother, um, who is a uh, nurse in on Andoria. But we don't speak frequently since I decided to leave and join Starfleet. And what did she feel like about that decision? Well, she worked closely with Dr. Bashir when the uh, plague came through Andoria and was one of the scientists that helped cure it with him. So when I decided to follow more in his footsteps and go to the frontier, uh, she wasn't pleased. She wanted me to stay home and reproduce where I wanted to explore. Well, I mean, I definitely could at least understand the call to the wild, as it were. At least everybody here, at least in one form or another, has felt that. But, listen, honestly, I just came in here to check on you. I am disappointed, but you're not a prisoner. Uh, the security says otherwise, Captain. You're supposed uh, to. <laughs> I do appreciate the visit. I do understand, and I thank you. I just ask that you take time to learn from this mistake. I mean, it happens to the best of us, but I'm not excusing anything, but you still are a valued member of this crew, and when the time comes, I still require your best. I appreciate it, and I will give my best. If, you're, if I'm ever needed... Please feel free to contact me. I am at your disposal. 
Yeah, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Mm-hmm. And in I that understand. case, I'll, I'm just gonna I'll, I'll exit his quarters. Okay. So we are going to be approaching the system. I believe Erkin, you are at the helm. I would assume. You wouldn't miss it for the world. Okay. <clears throat> we are on the bridge. And it's a little sparse without a proper science officer, or first off, well, er, with uh, Bashir's chair rather conspicuously empty at this point in time, you have reached the edge of the Etov system. You drop out of warp. Should we go in cloaked? For the best, whatever's happening to the Black Shield could still be going on. Okay, so if you guys are going to make a running silent, please roll that uh, test, which I believe is a structure plus security. Let's f- double check because I haven't rolled this check in a while. Uh, yes, so this would be a control plus engineering task from whoever is turning it on, assisted with the ship's computers plus security. And this would be a difficulty of two. I got the ship. Erkin's probably turning it on. He is at the helm. Yeah. Yeah, but my uh, my engineering abilities is lackluster at best. Did we uh not say he get he get you could replace that with Khan or uh, I that's must remember something only else? when fixing the ship or yeah. that sort of stuff. Oh, the ship does not okay. assist. Uh, if uh, someone sorry, what, maybe was it con- control and engineering? Sorry. Uh, control engineering. I mean, Vault Rani is also on the bridge, could, so she yeah, could also... Yeah, we can get Rani to do it. Yeah, get Rani. All right, so someone pick up Rani and have a roll. I've got her. Control. There you go. <clears throat> Ooh, sorry, just all the pop-ups just start behind the window. <laughs> Weird. <clears throat> Uh, Control hmm. engineering. Yeah, I'm just looking at a focus. She has sensor operations, communications, mining equipment, and gadgetry. I'll let sensor operations work for this particular check. Woo-hoo. Oh, okay. That's a complication right off the bat. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Yay! Uh, so... I see we have some work we have to do. Seemingly. Someone so... else is getting assigned the quarters. <clears throat> Okay, now. <laughs> uh, so, Vault Rani, um, the systems all report green. The active camouflage is working as intended. <clears throat> well, if that's the case, then take us in slowly. One quarter impulse. Taking us in. Okay. Uh, so, there are five planets into in the Etov system. Uh, the first... Uh, so the sun is a class G, so a yellow class star, similar to our sun. There is a planet fairly close that is a mercury size planet. Uh, then there is Etov, which is a class M. Uh, there is a class... Uh, there's a class L planet, which is next. Then there is a class J, Jupiter class. And followed by a... Ah, I forgot to write this one down. It appears to be more of a large, like an extremely large asteroid instead of a planet. Um, technically, probably should be classed R for rogue planet, because its orbit is just so different than the rest of the system that people believe, or that the, yeah, that those who surveyed this system believe it to have been a captured planet. Anyways, that is not the only thing you notice. So what you've notice is from the on the class M side, as soon as I get this to cooperate, there we go. Uh, planet of Etov is primarily water-based. Roughly uh, three quarters of it is water. And there is currently a very large uh, Vitars fleet that is set up a blockade. A significant amount of debris from uh, ships that do not match the, Vit- uh, the Vitars 
um, ship designs uh, litter the orbit, and your distress signal from the black shield would indicate that it is pr uh, most likely on the planet's moon. Uh, whoa. <laughs> well, they really got themselves into something, didn't they? <laughs> okay. Well, tactical analysis, Commander Helsing. Regardless of the Vitar's fleet in front of us, if there were to be another secondary attack, where would it come from? Okay, uh, so this is probably going to be an insight plus security roll. Uh, difficulty two. And the ship can assist with sensors plus security. All right, I got mine. It's like security. And because the um, Night, and because the Nighthawk has its advanced sensor talent, you get extra momentum if you succeed. Uh, infiltration, shipboard tactical systems as a focus. Eh, neither of those really work in this instance, I'm afraid. If you have a photography, uh, if you want a really good get a good look at the map yeah that would that would work for cartography <laughs> um if you had like a ship tactics or something like that would work okay. not yet that's my next thing when i hit the next i'm gonna hit the arc fair enough uh okay i got, I got the ship for one cool uh that is uh so you get the success and you get one momentum because of the um uh sensors <clears throat> so the Perkin, uh, you got the moment? Yeah, I got it. Cool beans. Cool. Uh, the the rubble of the or the the debris surrounding the sh the planet and the orbit indicates that the battle happened fairly recently, uh, within the last uh, two or three days, actually. So shortly after the distress call was sent from the black shield. Um, there is a good amount of them are Vitar ships that are littering the battlefield, but also the ship designs that indicate a fairly tight formation of, and because you succeeded, I will tell you this, um, you recognize the alloys being used as the Zell, as Zell construction. Uh, those were the species that were, you encountered in like session two, that were assimilated and kept assimilated by that corrupt AI. So now they're sending Roger. ships out to do things. Do we detect any Borg Thankfully, there's no technology? Borg. There's no Borg technology. Okay. Um, the Most of the... Uh, let's see, what else should I give you from this? So most of the fighting... So there's a gr uh, ground-based holdout combat taking place on the northernmost continent, there appears to be a massive city structure uh, that is uh, very heavily shielded so that even your um, advanced sensors can't pierce it. Um, you do pick up the uh, the point-to-point uh, -point signal, or, nope, sorry, you do pick up the Starfleet Intelligence Distress Beacon of on um, the covert frequencies from the Black Shield, very low power, but it is indeed emanating from the far surface of, or the far side of the moon. Can we, even though there is a distress beacon here, can we still scan for uh, black shield signatures? I just want to make sure that the debris that's here isn't, there isn't any like Starfleet debris uh, randomly amongst uh, it. If you spend that one momentum, I will answer that question. If nobody's opposed, I will. Yeah, we're, yep. we're, All right, cool. Go for it. Okay. There, uh, there is no star. There is not a significant amount of debris to indicate a Starfleet vessel. There is some alloy. There's uh, what appears to be a couple hull fragments, but not enough to be that of a ship. Are the hull fragments enough to determine the amount of damage they have taken? If you had an engineer, that they would probably give you a good estimate, but it's not not a significant amount, like not even a shuttlecraft's worth. Okay. Well, our primary duty is still still ascertain and uh, ensure the safety of Starfleet officers and crew. So whatever is going on on the planet is going to have to wait. Okay. 
Uh, so, Captain... But... Oh, sorry. Um, as you guys begin to discuss options, um, Helsing, your console, well, and Erkins, mm. notice that two of the um, smaller destroyer classes have broken off and are beginning to move towards you. Captain? I think they know we're here. <laughs> I thought we were under cloak. Can they see us? Uh... Uh, I don't have an answer for that, sir. Here, so, the, there's an engine, you contact them first, sir. There's a uh, call from engineering. Um, the Shran's rather agitated at the lack of communication because apparently the sis, apparently the active camouflage systems were not were disrupted a few days earlier from all that heavy radiation, and apparently have not fully come back online. Well. We're still not blasting our way out of this. Otherwise, we may end up in whatever position the Black Shield is in, or worse. Open hailing frequencies. Okay. Uh, they they answer. I uh, should note that they are charging weapons, but they're not. your ship is not detecting any active log on, or lock-ons. Recommend we heal them first, sir. I believe that they just did. So, yes... Where is it? There we go. <clears throat> One of the ships immediately answers. I'm Krevet Dark. We are familiar with you, Starfleet. This system is under the control of the Vatars Imperium. We recommend that you leave. This is Captain Singral of the Federation Starship Nighthawk. I understand that you may lay claim to the system, but currently, I am. I have other duties here, and I don't wish to interrupt. If you'd allow me to, we won't step. We will be out of your way, but we need to conduct a few scans of this area. The channel goes dark for a split second. Um, your uh, electronics communication system picks up a tight band communication between the destroyer and one of the carriers. It only lasts for roughly 30 seconds before the channel is brought back on. Starfleet, you are permitted to commit, or you are permitted to survey this area as necessary. However, please do not set foot on this planet. Doing so would be an act of aggression against the Vitars Imperium. I understand that, and I'll try to follow that to the best of my ability. <laughs> Single out. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. They didn't so, moon, sir. when do we beam down to the planet, sir? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going off of past history here. Uh, uh, one of them goes back to the... Uh, resumes their point in the blockade, while the other one Im sticks a respectable distance, but you know that they are keeping an eye on you. That's fine, let them look. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we'll be able to lose them if necessary later on, but yes. let's get started on those... Uh, on the uh, cloaking repairs. Okay. So while you begin cloaking repairs, we are going to cut to the planet because it makes fun. <clears throat> so we're going to cut to a dark alleyway deep inside the massive city that, that is known as Lev Ter Axe to the Starfleet team that was trapped behind the enemy lines. And what has happened for you guys is you were dispatched from the you are Starfleet Intelligence. You have been dispatched from the USS Black Shield uh, in an attempt to discover um, a strange energy signature from, that's emanating from this planet. Uh, you have been on this planet now for roughly four days. And approximately two days ago, there was a massive burst of energy, and you have not been able to contact the Nighthawk... Or, Sorry, three days ago, there was a massive surge of energy from the planet, and you lost contact with the USS Black Shield. Um, roughly two days ago, two sets of, of species set foot on this planet and began a slugfest. Uh, one is the Vitars Imperium, a group of um, a militaristic society of individuals who can pretty much download their brains into new bodies at and thus don't fear death. The other would be known as the Zealous, a, a group of individual, or a, ah, a species that had once 
created a miniature collective for themselves until the Borg assimilated them. Then the artificial intelligence refused to de-assimilate them until Starfleet intervened about four or five months ago. It appears that both of them are now in taking a significant interest in this planet, with the Zealous primarily controlling the city, as they got here first, and the Vitars attempting to wrench control of them. Uh, so for the last three days, you guys have been running to and from, trying to just stay one step ahead and try to find some way to reach out to Starfleet. So we are going to introduce... Um, our new player, Contra, and her character, Lieutenant Nadan. So if you wouldn't mind just please describing your character a bit. Sure. Um, so this is Lieutenant Audra Nadan. Sorry. I'm... Um, she's of indeterminate age because I feel that age is a social construct and also didn't think about an age. Um, she's uh, originally hails from Trill. She's been in Starfleet for about 15 ish years but again um she's she's a sculptor she has a lot of she's a, a busy lady she's got a lot going on <laughs> cool uh also part of the black shield team is lieutenant i believe it was hal poran yes uh, and if you could just describe yourself now please Mr. <clears throat> poran um about six foot tall very pale looking uh I am actually a f android uh, protecting the lieutenant. Very well. <laughs> uh, also included in this little party is Ensign Roger Harris, who will fulfill the combat slash medicine tasks if necessary. Uh, because sadly, this wasn't a way team of five. Your lieutenant commander team lead died in the initial energy output. And you guys have basically been on the run since. Uh, you're, you're currently in a series of back alleyways, uh, pretty close to a s section of city known as the Cesspits, a.k.a. the Sewer Area. And right now there is a group of zealous soldiers. While not actively looking for you, they are definitely on the watch and moving around looking for Vitar's intruders. What is it you guys would like to do? Lieutenant, stay down. I'll go forward. I'll cover you. And so I'm sneaking around the alleyway, seeing if there's a clear way. Okay. So I'm this... looking out to see if I can see anyone coming. Okay. They're not being extremely quiet. Uh, as far as they can tell, they, there is no Starfleet or any Vitars in this area, so they are moving with a sort of coordinated ease. Their steps seem to sort of lock in with one another as soon as they find a comfortable march pace. And as soon as everything sort of becomes a bit more casual, they sort of switch off and take a more casual stance. It's kind of eerie how they can coordinate and on and off with such precision. Um, so if Mr. Poran could please roll me an insight security, I believe would be a good thing. And if someone wants to take Roger Harris, uh, he should have a sheet just at the bottom of all the characters. And Mr. Harris could assist or Miss Nadan could assist with insight um, security. I can assist. Can you just remind me what I need to roll? I'm sorry. Uh, that would be insight plus security. So on your character sheet, just click the insight button. And then it should... You can select security from the drop-down menu. And then, because you are assisting, you only roll one dice. 1d20, one yep. And if uh, you have which, stuff like have surveillance a... or infiltration, tasks like that would be useful. Good, those would be good focuses. Okay. And you got... Critical success, nice. Um, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're just, we're getting some momentum here, folks. Uh, that would be two momentum. Woohoo! <clears throat> uh, so you see a group of zealous. Uh, there appear to be five of them. Uh, they are sweeping the. Um, uh, they are sweeping the entrances into the cesspits. Uh, you hear them speak quietly to one another. Uh, your universal translator kicks in really quickly. 
Um, it appears that they have heard they've heard rumors of Vitars uh, poking through an area known as the Bulwark. And if they're at the Bulwark, then there's a good possibility that they are drilling under the city and could come through the cesspits. And they are in, they are looking f to secure entrances as needed. What is this area? I mean, are there any, like, shop buildings or anything? Uh, sorry, you cut out briefly? I said, is there any sort of shops or buildings, like, you know, of that kind of thing in this area? So the upper levels of the cesspits would be sort of slummish-type areas. So several ramshackle uh, buildings, many of which have, been, have decayed due to age. This city is apparently quite old and has been abandoned by its makers for some time. Uh, so there's plenty of places for you to hide in if you wish. Um, I was looking for something more active because I'd like to access computers. Ah, yeah. awesome. you're looking for the computer system. Okay. Um, if you spend those two momentum and generate the advantage, I will definitely tell you that you can find a computers. Works for me. Works for me. Okay. <clears throat> A lot of the systems this far out from the central spire have been destroyed, either just due to wear and tear of age or through active bombardment. However, you are very fortunate to find a working system that is still tied into the city net. Okay. I would like to proceed to try to hack it. Very and well. get access. Okay. Uh, this would be a control plus... Um, uh, hacking, I think, would be best under security. Can I assist? Uh, yes, your Harris could assist. And if you have computer science, hacking, those would be good focuses here. This is going I to be a difficulty... Uh, this will be a difficulty of two. Because you've been in this city long enough to at least understand how their computers work. That's one gotcha. success so far from Paran. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. That's okay. It's an... Almost there. That's fine. That's the one success for Audrey. Cool. Nice. <clears throat> you have successfully infiltrated at least this portion of the network. What are you looking for? Um, basically, I want to try to broadcast on a Starfleet frequency um, either to a starbase or something uh, to get us out of here. Ah, yes. The, there is a main problem with that, is that the city's uh, central shields have been activated, and okay. these shields have prevented all in, turn, all in and out of communications. Could we, with the shields, could we lower the shields or use, the, like, kind of, could we release something past them, like a probe or a... Sadly yeah, not. No um, what I will give you from... The, so this is the city. And you guys are currently in the... Uh, the cesspits, which is over here. And I have already... Two, ses two minutes in and I've already buggered up the zone... The control zones. There we go. <clears throat> so you guys are in the cesspits area, which is currently Zell territory. And the only places that can deactivate the um, the city defenses are either at the spire or mm -hmm. at the bunker, both of which are currently under Zell control. Um, although the muff, um, however, thanks to your just tapping into the city's systems, you're at least now able to determine which areas of the city are now under whose control. Could we use the computers to create some kind of a distraction? You certainly may do so. What sort what sort of distraction are you looking for? I don't know, some kind of phase modulation, you get a weird slamming door. Take your pick. Ah, so you just want to distract the local team while you beat feet and go somewhere else? Bingo. Okay. Cool. Uh because you already have access to the system, that's going to reduce the difficulty by 1. Uh, so this is going to be a daring plus security or daring plus science, whichever one you wish to do. Uh, difficulty one and, you know, computer science, infiltration, distraction, that sort of 
Okay. Yeah. And Urken, I believe that they've they currently have no momentum because they spent it on the advantage. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Paran. Sorry, gets... come... Uh, okay, so uh, uh, because you're assisting, you only roll one dice. So oh, thankfully... sorry, I thought. Yep, sorry. That's okay. Um, so that second dice won't count, which means that complication doesn't count. So yay! yay. Uh, so you do get one momentum out of the deal. Um, the computer system uh, tie thankfully ties into the uh, couple um, alarm systems for several shops along the perimeter or along this row, I should say. And you have set them off, and the this startles the security team, and they immediately go and take a look. Great. All right. So I say we we make a dash for the we make a dash for the bunker. I suppose, right? That would be my assumption. That seems like a closer to the objective. Cool. Okay. And we will cut back to your team shortly. Back to the USS Nighthawk. Your um, Thishrand uh, w finally swears upon his uh, duty pips and the Klingon Batleth he happens to have in his quarters that the uh, active cloaking f um, ah, the active cloaking system is once again functioning as it should, Captain. Well, we don't need to activate it just quite yet, since we do have somebody that is watching us. But if we need to make a mad dash and then suddenly disappear, just be ready for that. Okay. In any case, we still need to determine the rest of where uh, where the black shield is. So, go ahead. Let's kind of uh, take some scans around the around the moon and see what we can pick up here. Okay. Uh, so this is going to be uh, either Insight Science or Insight Con for the Starship Recognition. A difficulty oh, of one, because you kind of know where it already is, but you want more information. Alright, well, I'll Insight Con. Is that okay. Fine? Strong suit. And ship, uh, the ship can assist, of course, with uh, sensors plus science. Ooh. Oh, wow, Urkin. Okay, that is two momentum already. Urkin. <laughs> and sensor science? Yeah. Okay, three momentum total. Nice. Wow, nice. Cool. Okay, so it's not hard to find once... Um, well, okay, it's a little difficult to find because they're active... Clo they're active... Set, ah, their active camouflage systems are still active, but you do find them on the moon. So are they on the moon specifically, or are they just like on the dark side of it, or are they behind it? They are like, on the dark side of the moon, a.k.a. their ship has landed. Um, gotcha. You're reading minimal Good. power. Um, life support is at minimum. Um, and the, uh, Urkin, you can definitely see that this has been a fairly rough landing mm -hmm. controlled in about as much as you can control a ship the size of Def the defiant crashing on a planet's surface but they are in one piece can we determine if they need if they have if they have the ability to take off again uh do they have the ability to do so um if urkin chooses to spend one momentum i can answer that question uh, I'd like to because it's part of the Starship Expert. Ah, is that? Um, so I'll use that as my free question. Oh, you get a free question. Cool. Yeah. Um, whenever you succeeded a contest to identify a type of starship, so that's sort of this one. Yep, that would work. Uh, I gained one bonus momentum, which may be spent to obtain information. Cool. So uh, their power systems appear to be shot. Um, the, you're not detecting their... Uh, you're not detecting much in the way of a functioning impulse drive. 
Uh, so, as of right now, they're not going anywhere. And a point of clarification, but yes. the Vitar said that we weren't allowed to land on the planet. Correct. They didn't say anything about the moon. They did not. In fact, none of them are actually paying the moon much attention. It is a dead moon um, with no st no structures or life signs on it, aside from those that the you know Black Shield would have. So, Captain, we could just tractor beam them to free space. I mean, we could, but we also don't know exactly which one of these people shot them down and what, uh, why they had to crash and what they're hiding from, potentially. I don't want to tractor them out in the middle of the opening like that. We still need to get in contact with them. Oh, yeah, totally. And... But just for method of evac. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. So, jumping to jumping to solutions again. Not thinking through the process. Oh well, I mean that's why you're in the uh, you're in this command training right now, right? <laughs> You'll learn. In any case, let's try to get in contact with the Black Shield. Let's send a uh, encrypted subspace KK to them and make sure that the uh, the rest of our Vitaris friends don't notice that we are doing so because we still don't know who's the instigator here. Very well. So, the commander of the ship, uh, Commander Truel, a Chelan, a.k.a. Turtle Species, uh, responds in text only. Um, the, he precedes the text with his security clearance to identify that, yes, it is indeed him. Uh, the text reads, communications array damaged, engines damaged, pretty much everything damaged. Um could meet, uh, recommend meeting face to face if possible. Uh, team on surface, please help. <laughs> All right, well, I'll go ahead and message him back. Acknowledged, I'll ask him his preferred method of evac, and I'll send also preparing our way team. Um, uh, his preferred method of evac is send more engineers. We'll we'll fix ship ourselves. <clears throat> um, be uh, beware planetoid or planetary uh, energy resonance weapon. Oh boy, I love another super weapon for the Nighthawk to collect. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. We excel at this. But no, I will uh, prepare a few engineers uh, to go over and assist the, the Black Shield, and I'll also prepare to beam over there. Okay. Um, again, still, um, I try to make this covert since they are on the dark side of the moon. Okay. Um, so if we can make this transporter roll without the Vitar still noticing, that's my preferred method. Okay. So I'll beam over there with a long bunch of engineers, and Commander Helsing will have the ship. Very well. Um, so if you want it to be subtle, that will be an increased difficulty of one. Um, but because you're beaming from transporter pad to transporter pad, that is just going to be difficulty two plus one for that. So, diffi uh, so difficulty of three. Um, so control plus engineering. Uh, for the transporter task, and ship can assist with sensors plus engineering. Difficulty three. Sensors, engineering. Yeah, I'll go ahead and grab uh, Zell. Yep, Chief Zell. You said control engineering? Control engineering. We got one success from the ship. Does she have any determination yet? I believe she does have a value. She does, yes. Now, do you, quick question. Do you want to send it on the transporter test to send the captain down? Or do you might want to save it for, you know, the almost inevitable beaming the captain back or beaming an away team back? I do want to save it. Yeah. Not quite necessary. In my mind, at least, yet, <laughs> to do so. Even though you're trying to tease me right now. Totally. I see your game. Yeah. We do have momentum. I'm going to roll this. 
Wow. Good success. Uh, it's enough for the transporter action to um, be successful. However, the Vitaris definitely takes notice that you are doing a bit of transporting to the dark side of the moon. Oh, they didn't say planet, so whatever. Yes, indeed. <clears throat> okay. I mean, we just need to take scans of the moon up close. Mm -hmm. And because I don't actually have a bridge for the black shield, we will just use the same bridge as the Nighthawk, just with different people. Okay. Okay. So, you, Captain Sangral, you are met with Commander Truel. He meets you at the transporter pad. And as soon as the engineers arrive, he points them to the engineering section of the ship and tells them that his chief will direct them on what needs to be repaired. And he, he nods his um, muscular neck. Captain Sangral, thank you so much for attending to this personally. Well, I understand, and no problem, but I assume time is of the essence here, so let's get to work. Agreed. Um, he escorts you to the bridge, and the Phantom-class vessels are as about as tight quartered as the Defiant. So, where you're used to walking two abreast, even three on some of the corridors, uh, his, ra his rather bulky frame prevents anyone from walking past as... Um, as easily as one would in a hallway, all people have to sort of sidle off to the side, suck in their gut for his large uh, shell not to push, physically push them. This does not seem to bother him. He seems to be used to letting people, or making people get out of his way. <clears throat> Captain. From, based on our last report, Captain, the Vitars had been amassing a fairly sizable armada near the Zell space. We thought that they were planning something against the Zell. However, it appears that their sight was set on this system, based on a few recon scans that we had performed. We wanted to know why. Turns out this system appears as a massive armory for a species that we have yet to encounter. Looks like the Vitaris just wanted more weapons. And the... Oddly enough, the Zealous got there first, but were immediately repulsed by some form of cascade wave that emanated from the planet's surface itself, demolished them, left us, and he gestures around, like this. Thankfully, our technology survived the impact better than theirs, and we quickly made to hide as the inevitable reinforcements were coming. The Vitaris arrived a day or two after, followed shortly by a by another Zealous Armada. The Zealous Armada was overwhelmed and destroyed. I can relay to you the battles, the battle tactics used. Quite different. It was quite interesting to see asymmetrical warfare performed at, with such precision. Let's back up to the part where you mentioned a planetary super weapon. Yes, the Cascade Field. Not entirely sure what cause, what it is, only that there is an element within the planet's surface that seems to amplify its geothermal energy of some sort. I don't know. We sent our scientists down to the planet with a couple escorts to get some answers before all this happened, and they went to ground. To the best of your knowledge, is this weapon defensive or offensive? Its range is short, Captain. Oh, roughly to roughly to an L1 point, it wouldn't even be able to get. It would not even be able to reach the moon. It appears to be defensive in nature. Speculate. Is, can can it be? Uh, if it has, does it have the ability to be portable? If so inclined. Unlikely. Based on its construction. Unlikely. The te the ore of the planet is deep seated, and seems to act as a natural channeling and channeling mechanism for the geothermal energy. The large spire of this 
decrepit city appears to be its control point. To move this weapon, you would have to move the planet. However, I there I should note, Captain, that this is the only this is only one weapon. There are several other primitive weapons, primarily atomics, a few neutrino bombs, nothing that we haven't surpassed in several in the last hundred years. It appears to be a stockpile. Well, enough of those armaments in, any, in general can take on any of these ships, including our own. Agreed. Well, and you say you have no idea what the race was that previously inhabited this planet and stockpiled these defenses? Agreed. That is correct, Captain. And the, the race... We were beginning to eva evaluate what the race that built this, pl this city... However, well, you see what happens. But to your knowledge that there's none of them that are on the planet's surface. Uh, correct. It appears to have been a... Uh, there were no life signs on this planet, sir. Well then, Commander, to the best of my knowledge, I'm changing the aspect of this mission. It's changed from asset retrieval to asset denial. No one's going to get their hands on this. Sir, my, I shall assist in any way that I can. We have two covert shuttle pods available. Type XX if necessary. Well, I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and contact you when it's time when I get a proper away team together. In the meantime, make sure you uh, send the rest of your data on your away team that's still trapped off within the planet and we'll try to form a rescue operation. Of course, sir. And he will pass you a data pad. Uh, uh, predicting that he would need this information, he pans you a data pad. On it are five names, um, three of which we now know are still alive. The other two, uh, Lieutenant Commander uh, uh, Lieutenant Commander Cheris would be the team lead. Um, there's obviously... Oh, God, I have far too many character sheets open. Uh, there's Lieutenant Hal Peran, Lieutenant Audred Nadan, Ensign Roger Harris and Ensign Justin Timber. Well, we'll see what we can do for them. It's, I mean, they did serve with you, so if there's any other peculiarities or quirks that you know about them that will come in useful in terms of them hiding out on this planet, you let me know. He does a quick look around, make sure that there's no crewmen nearby. While he has been hiding it from the, from the overall... Uh, come, ah, well, from the director. Uh, Mr. Peran is an android, sir. Why? I mean, not why is he an android, but <laughs> why is he on this, on this vessel? Uh, uh, Mr. Peran, uh, Mr. Peran has long been a friend of mine and has provided some sig a significant amount of tactical, tactical analysis assistance. And in what manner of android is he? Soong type or other? Ah, he is a... I believe the proper term is a holotronic android. They tried with the positronic brains for far too long and never could stabilize them, so instead they, impl they implemented the AI algorithms used to control sentient holograms into a body similar to a Soong type. Well, if I find him, I'll go ahead and uh, try to bring him back for you. I can understand why you wouldn't want to tell the director, though. I appreciate that. Also, if need be, please ensure that he is denied to the enemy. If, you know, you know, staff, you know following the proper Starfleet intelligence directives. I understand. In any case, we'll key in shut soon. Agreed. Fair winds, Captain. And on that note, we are going to take a quick bio break. And uh, we shall return in about 10 minutes or so. My apologies for the suddenness of such a thing.
Okay, and we are back. So we are going to resume our struggle through the city as soon as I pull up the right overlays. There we go. All right. Nope, wrong screen, right screen. Let me roll to see how this battle is coming because you guys are taking a couple hours to get where you need to go. Okay. So, what is happening is, as you guys are making your way deeper through the cesspits, uh, there is a fairly sizable explosion coming f uh, several hundred meters away. As the Vitars apparently breach through the bulwark and have begun to enter the city. Or have begun to enter the gallery, I should say. So, above you. And a fight has broken out between them and the Zell, to which point the Zell security forces appear to actually be successful in repelling them, at least for the moment. However, they are rather wounded. So I shall quickly put a... that one. Wrong button. Uh, in the rear, the... Uh, the Vitars in the Radworks are attempting to enter the bunker, but are repelled rather easily, and thus have not made much progress. You guys come across the bunker, which is r rather a small term for such a massive construct. It's the size of a rather large city in and of itself, but is ironclad and fortressed. Um, a, just picture like a massive sewer complex that is under underground and heavily fortified and i just realized i sort of repeated myself because i'm just trying to get across how darn defensive this thing is uh there is so to get in um to move between zones without opposition by normals would be a uh, fitness plus security uh, if you want to get across stealthily, so leave no trace that you were there, that would be difficulty 3. However, due to the bunker's nature, uh, the difficulty is actually increased by 1. So if you want to move without opposition at all, that would be difficulty 3. If you want to move in stealthily, that would be difficulty 4. And this is a new scene, so you lose 1 momentum. Which puts us at... Uh, 3 momentum, I believe. Okay. I want to try moving stealthily. I agree. Okay. Uh, so this is... Uh, who wants to take the lead on this? Uh, I can. Okay. Uh, so this will be fitness security, and which um, either Mr. Harris or Mr. Horan could take... Or Poran, sorry. Mr. Poran could take uh, the assisting role. And I you, shall assist. You have. Sorry, three. so am I rolling... Am I rolling 2d20? You, you, you are rolling. Yeah, you are rolling. I was gonna say, two d twenty. Go on. Go on. Or and or you could spend could momentum. momentum, and like you could do three d twenty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I have an applicable momentum. <laughs> okay. So oh, you got a critical success on one, so that's two. Uh, so, if you want to try moving stealthily, Mister Paran, you will need to get a critical success, and of course he does. Because <laughs> apparently you're very good at this. <laughs> We're <Nice>. very stealthy. <laughs> ah. He oiled his joints. I'm so glad that there are actual Starfleet intelligence officers that know how to be stealthy. And <laughs> that is so. Oh! Oh! <laughs> we have a sheer watch and learn. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Notice how they don't stand up. So you guys have found, uh, you, you find a way through in um, an adjoining, basically an adjoining storage closet that has, ru where one of the walls has rusted out due to seepage of, let's say, questionable material, and has rusted away enough for you guys to sneak in um, un unhindered. Uh, inside the bunker is a massive storehouse. Uh, rows upon rows upon rows of 
Well, it, you don't need to have a degree in engineering weapons systems or any of that stuff to see the amount of potential munitions here. Uh, you sort of had an understanding that there was a lot of munitions from your deployment to the planet, but they were deemed a secondary objective over trying to ascertain the nature of the resonance weapon. Um, there's also a significant number of Zell that have assumed defensive positions around this massive storehouse, primarily because on the other side they are currently being assaulted by Vitar's people that want to get in to claim said weapons. Do we know how many Zell are around us? Hmm. That would be a good question. Uh, this would be an insight medicine test. For, um, I should note that Roger Harris has a medical tricorder, and you guys have regular tricorders. Um, this will just be a di this will be a difficulty of three because of all the junk that is currently in this bunker area. So someone, so Harris could take the lead, or one of you guys could, and someone can assist. So insight medicine. Let's give Harris the lead. Okay, uh, who wants to take Harris? Don't everyone Anyone. speak at once. I'll pick him up. Okay. I can assist. Sure thing. So medical and insight. Medical insight and one dice for the assister. Yep. And Harris Ulysses. All right. Yep. So what would Harris's be? Ah, insight medicine. Inside medicine. Yeah. Just trying to dig him up, and I'll pay more attention to that. I apologize. That's okay. He's a brand new character made specifically for this scenario. It's not unsurprising. Okay, so that is two. Uh, I will let that succeed by giving at cost, so I'll take a point of threat. Uh, there's roughly a 35 Zell within the bunker area. Uh, they appear to primarily be located either along the walls or the defensive choke points. And then there is a sig there's a decent number that is located at in an isolated building in the center of the bunker. Hmm. With a couple on patrol. I would assume the device we are looking for is in the or inside the building. Quite possible. Lieutenant, your theory? I'm so sorry, I'm having some trouble hearing. Oh. I said the effort, the device we are looking for probably the building. Ooh, you've developed a nasty habit of cut off at times there, Mr. Bashir. Really? Yeah. Not entirely sure why either. You, most of you are coming I... through clear. Huh. Ah, uh, well. Um, I, so you believe that the um, weapons are probably in the central building? It seems like a fair enough assumption. Uh, and how many life forms were in that area? So there would be eight life forms in the central area. And then there would be... Do we know anything about... I'm oh, sorry. Uh, there would be eight in the central area, uh, another eight on either... S at the various choke points, and then the rest are patrolling. If you need some time, we can cut we can cut back and see what's going on uh, in space. Well, I mean, I guess 
Mm, sorry. That's okay. So our op- our options are either to continue towards to try to fight off thirty two people, or or cut up through cut up and try to get to the weapons. Correct. Um, I mean, I think our only option is to cut up to the weapons. It's three of us against two. I'm not a mathematician, but the odds don't seem that good to me. Well, technically, the odds are actually. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, bring it. Um, Well, we really just need to take out eight. If we can somehow cause a distraction and enter the encampment. (sighs) Do we have anything on us? Anything we might have taken from the ship that we could use as a distraction? Uh, um, what you would currently have would be your tricorders, your phasers. Uh, you had at one point some infiltration suits, you know, those cloaked suits that they used in... Yeah. Um, but most of their power cells have died. You probably can rig one up sufficiently well enough. Um, there's several tarps and camouflage gear that you guys have salvaged. And if you'd like, you could have picked up some power cells or weapons from some of the folks that you've uh, been following around. I could possibly rig up one of the tricorders to explode. That seems like a very worthwhile distraction. Can I assist you in that? Of course. Let's give it a shot. Okay, so this is going to be control plus security, I believe. Uh, Yeah, let's do control security. Uh, This will be a difficulty of two, just because you're working with Federation technology, and it's, if anything, Next Generation and Star Trek has taught us, it's that all Starfleet technology can explode. Right, that's kind of where I was going with. Yeah. Um, Computers, cybernetics, survival, covert operations, infiltration, interrogation. Any Uh, of that ring a bell? I would let um, probably infiltration work in this instance. Okay. Something along those lines. Uh, That's one from Nadan. And that is... Okay, uh, that's four, uh, four degrees of success, so two momentum. And congratulations, you now have a tricorder bomb. Excellent. Excellent. Good job, Lieutenant. Thank you. Okay. And while we plot out what the heck we're going to blow up, let's cut back to space. Why not blow everything up? (laughs) I mean, that's always a captain's prerogative, but there is a lot of, uh, well, hostiles in the area. Okay, Captain... Uh, it's been roughly an hour since you've beamed back from the surface, or beamed back from the moon. What do you wish to do? Well, I'll go grab Commander Helsing. I'll tell, inform him of the situation of uh, what Commander Truel has informed me of, and get his recommendation on the way to him. This is still is his prerogative here right now. But whatever he decides, I'm coming with him. Well, I'm going with the away team, that is. It's your prerogative, sir, but... You have people for that. I think it's at least going to be a little bit easier if we had not just senses, but an empath along, if we wanted to go try to find these people. As fast as possible. That's true. You're you're like a living tricorder. I mean, you know, when one fails, another one possibly could succeed. I don't want to toot my own heart. Sometimes I do this and I get knocked out. So, you know, hopefully something like that doesn't happen this time around. And they might be able to pick up a tricorder reading, but an empath reading, I don't know if they'd be able to pick that up. In any case, Commander, if you if you find it necessary, go ahead and assemble an away team. Hi, uh, sir. Okay. So, um, first question is, who would like to be on the away team? So, 
obviously the captain and Mr. Helsing are interested in going along. Well, well hold on now. Helsing's now first officer. Oh, yes. Isn't, we need someone still that's uh, in command on the ship. I mean, yeah, Helsing will stay up it. on the ship, um, but Hanara has good infiltration from security. So we have and Lisa Null, with her experience, and leave Yaz up on board to man the security station. Okay. Yep. Uh, um, we'll need somebody from medical. Okay. Um, Mr. Erkin, do you wish to come along? I always wish to come along. Okay. After all, they'll need a pilot, because beaming into the city right now is rather impossible with the shields up. Can we fly the shut? The shuttle's only hidden when it's not moving. Correct. However, um, let's see. Can we not move fast? Oh, you can really move. The ship, the starship can move fast. The shuttle could also move fast. Shuttles can are also small we... enough they potentially could, you know, get in with a, uh, ah, uh, get past sensors, etc. Can we not move fast? Totally. You can not move at all. Just like if we let because we're invisible when we don't move. Oh, interesting idea. So you're talking about just sort of coasting. Mm -hmm. Or just going with our eyes closed. <laughs> <laughs> Prophets, take the wheel. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's an interesting challenge. Um, if anyone can pull it off... Please don't breathe into the mic. Um, if anyone can pull it off, that would be Mr. Alec. Um, I don't know. Jefferson's giving him a run for his money. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Captain. And... Oh, sorry. Um, so, uh, is anyone interested in taking Hanara and Noel? As their... Uh, which, one, which one do you want to play, Helsing? I'll take Hanara. Okay. Um, Hels, um, Bashir, or Nadan, are you guys, a, one of you interested in picking up Miss Noel? I can do it if no one else is. Okay. Uh, then you can grab her character sheet. I believe... And that's another, act yeah. that's another activation for Noel, so... And Hanara both. Uh, yep, yeah, so, yep, yeah, um, rules for advancing support characters are 135 of the core rulebook, so feel free to b b bump them as needed. And we are still missing a support character for Bashir. Okay. So, I will take... Something probably medical. medical or an engineer. I was thinking medical. Oh, we have no shortage of those. I'm not just quite sure if there's anyone that's specifically skilled in infiltration. I don't think so. Are you going to make Kovax, uh, like, open? Uh, oh, my apologies, yes. Um, Kovax can be open to people. Let's bring him in by all players. There we go. Kovax can now be used by anyone. All right. <clears throat> Do you want to play Kovax? Yep, I got him. Okay. Cool. Okay, we have an away team. So, Captain Singral, just as you guys are all making your way down to the shuttle bay, um, you are getting a call from the bridge because uh, Mr. Uh, Helsing, uh, your security officer, has informed you of a series or a sm small fleet of ships has just dropped out of warp and are burning towards the planet at max impulse. Can we identify them? Zell or uh, Vitaris, or third party. They are definitely not uh, Vitaris. Well, uh, Zell, then, maybe? Most likely, Could... yes. Well, I mean, we're still on, personally, in decent terms with the Zell. Mm -hmm. Uh We've already made ourselves available to the Vitars. We might as well contact them if they're coming into the system now. All right. Let me just get all the tokens in play here. 
Realize I should have made the map space a bit bigger, but eh, c'est la vie. Is it not the best time to launch the shuttle while, they're, while the Vitars have got their attention somewhere else? It is, and I'm not saying we should stop. I'm still saying that the Nighthawk themselves should make them make themselves aware to the Zell. Okay. That's my captain's our recommendation. However, if people want to argue with me on that front, now's the time. I'm all for it. Lieutenant? Uh, your call, Captain. I'm okay... I, I just want to get down to the planet, sir. The less the less time I'm exposed in a little tiny, albeit wonderful, tin can, caught now between two two potentially battling forces is best. The uh, most the least amount of time would be better. Well, in any case, if that's your prerogative, or I'm going to trust your instincts. Time is of the essence. So let's just go. The Zell? Didn't we make the Zell? Well, you freed them, so yeah. <laughs> Okay, so um, if I'm understanding correctly, you are choosing to take the Type XX shuttle? Yes, please. Okay. Let's find the Type XX. And where did we land exactly with the, if we coast, can we still be cloaked? Like, do we have to be... I so was that... joking on that. <laughs> That's going. Um, so if you're going to try to make, use turn the active sensors in or the passive sense ah, if you're going to use the passive um, camouflage systems and make them active, um, that's going to increase the difficulty. So it will be a um, control engineering difficulty of three, and the ship can assist with structure engineering. And because if you're running it, then uh, if you're going to be running it, then I will let you use con for this. Because <clears throat> uh, my whole my my strategy, if this if this is the instance, is to burn out of the shuttle bay, mm -hmm. and as soon as we leave the ship, we coast. <laughs> okay, that sounds like so a good plan to me. So we essentially just go down, we point towards the planet, give it the engines, and then coast away. Interesting idea. Okay, uh, so this is going. So let's do the uh, let's do the camouflage test first. Uh, so this okay. will be a control plus con, and the Type XX shuttle can assist with structure plus engineering, and this will be a difficulty three. Uh, I want to spend a momentum on this. Okay. Okay, shuttlecraft does not assist. Um, control con. Sorry, was it control con? Control uh, con, memory. yes. Okay, memory of the goldfish. Twenty. Ooh, not good. Ooh, not good. Okay. Um. You could spend your determination to re-roll those zeros if you want, or because you did pick up a free determination from last session. I did. Uh, sure. My determination, yeah, against the profits, take the wheel. Okay. Let's re-roll these zeros. Come on, baby. That'll do it. That's the three successes you need. <clears throat> so yeah, uh, the with some quick jury rigging and you know, who really needs life support for a trip that should only take about ten minutes, really? Yeah. 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 Hold your breath. You believe that you have things sorted out. Now let's do the um let's do the task for pointing and shooting the shuttle to where you need to go. Uh, this is going to be a daring plus contest, um, and I will set the difficulty at four because you are attempting to basically hit a needle in a moving haystack. That's exactly right. Um, I'm going to use the bold talent. Okay. 
So you're giving me a point of threat? Yeah, for one... <laughs> one extra d20? Cool. One extra d20. And also spending momentum, if that's okay with people. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah. I do not... Would the shuttle be... Uh, sorry, point of order. You can only spend threat or momentum, not both per roll. So you can only give... Um, so per test, you can only enhance the test with momentum or with threat. And if you want to buy threat, then you can't use momentum. Oh, so I can't use the bold test plus spending momentum? Correct. The bold... um, ah. the... Oh, pfft. Yeah, so the bold test would be so you're using dare or you're giving me threat to get an extra d20, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you cannot use momentum to get a fourth dice on top of that. Oh, okay. you you could give me more threat for a fourth dice. So that'd be giving me th uh, three threat total. Ah, PDF's gone all haywire. Whoa, hello, roboticy, hello. Hello, testing one two. Okay, I can hear you. Okay. Hmm, <clears throat> how much threat do you have? Um, I still have a decent amount of it. Yeah. Ah, heck, why not? Okay, right. I will take this. No matter what, I have to try. That's one of my values. Fair enough. This is this is where we all die. Okay. Okay, so you get I get four d twenty. In would the shuttle be able to assist? Uh, shuttle can assist with um, engines. Uh, in this instance, it will be sensors plus con. Roll well. Please roll well. Ooh, ooh, interesting. <clears throat> okay, so you got th uh, three successes. There's the ooh. four you need. Okay, cool. <clears throat> we could use momentum to get rid of that. You could buy that off with two momentum if you want. Or you could let the GM have his fun. Take your pick. We're buying it off. Aww. We're going to save that wall <laughs> momentum to, uh, for the foreseeable future. Hopefully you boys roll better later on. Fair enough. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, so Hels So while the shuttle does their thing, uh, Helsing, you are making yourself known to the Zell, or the Zealous, if I recall correctly? Um... That's right. Okay. The people who just came in. How do you wish to do that? Um, attention fleet that just entered the planetary system. This is the USS Nighthawk. Who may we have the pleasure of talking? Okay. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Uh, I had a character for this. Okay. A uh, pink-skinned woman um, with obvious, obviously where she, her cybernetic implants were at one point have been uh, removed, but there's still uh, cybernetic uh, infrastructure under her skin that glows with uh, faint uh, blue electrical signaling. Uh, her hair is, di is bright purple, and she stands at curt attention. This is Commander Tree, of the zealous armada of the zealous second armada third battalion we are aware of you starfleet and we hold you in high regard we must ask that you stand down well, we're we're just here answering a distress call from a ship that we are familiar with and we're just trying to see what's going on there and we came into this and between you and the vatars another empire that we are known to as well what happened the it in the annals of our of our history this world has often been held as a defensive point against any invasion from the militants of the the militants known as the vatars with our liberation from the uh, burdensome ai it has been decided to, to claim it for ourselves However, the, however, our initial forays triggered a defense mechanism that wiped out most of our fleet. In the ensuing chaos, the Vitars have moved in. We intend to take it back. 
we will not be surrounded by by these uh, by these warmongers. The, now that we are free, we we refuse to live at the yoke of anyone else. I totally understand that sentiment. Those who enslaved you before, unfortunately, were known to us and were scourged in our area of space until they were th thrown away as well. And we feel very much the same way. But the Vatars, we've come across them, they do seem warlike, but we haven't seen them engage in overtly hostile actions like this. Then congratulations, do they have a claim? Congratulations, Captain. You now see them at their truest nature. Our algorithm suggests that the only way to keep them at bay is to hold this planet and its system and its numerous weapons. We intend to do so, even if it costs us your, our lives. Your algorithm. When was that algorithm created? Uh, she rattles off of several. Uh, she rattles off several dates. Uh, the, a quick punch into the Nighthawks uh, uh, calendar system does translate it to roughly five months ago, when you uh, uploaded their liberate, uh, uploaded their corrective artificial intelligence. And you have faith in your algorithm that it wasn't corrupted in any means before? Our, we have just saying you've just been freed from the corruptive AI. We have. We, we check our algorithms independently uh, at all times. We will not be slave to a single guiding system any further. I don't understand. Is there anything that we can do to help bring peace between you two? Your technology is still superior than ours in several uh, key assets. Um, we do, and we do believe that you could provide a serious. Uh, us, you do. Ah, we believe that you could be a, a significant force multiplier in our on, in our coming engagement. If you wish to assist us, that would be greatly appreciated. There is one directive. I don't know how much you know about the Federation yet. There is one directive that we hold almost sacred. In fact, is our prime directive. It's we don't interfere in the natural development of other cultures, but we don't want to see two potential friends fighting each other either. And the Federation has served as mediators in the past and we'd be willing to do th that role again another time captain or another time commander however our course is set we must we must ensure that our territory remains secure and we will do so at the cost of our lives and take as many of these da many of these um, bastards down as possible. But how long has this been your territory? You said you just came into the system. We have held we have held the territory of the the, the four Zell planets for several decades. However, our in order uh, the. However, to keep our four planets secure, we must secure this planet as well. And if we were, to, if we came up with another solution to help secure your planets? You had, you had better do it quickly, Commander, because we are about to engage. And at that, she will cut the communication and her ships will bypass yours and begin diving straight into the uh, straight into orbit of the uh, Vitar's fleet. And a great light shield would begin to appear as several things begin to explode. Um, thankfully, however, the shuttle has begun making it through all this unharmed. So I sent a, an emergency message to the, the shuttle to bring the captain aware that 
of the uh, I keep mispronouncing their name. The, the newcomers, the zealous, the Zell. yeah, zealous, the zealous coming in. Okay, Urkin, you are in high or or you are in high orbit of the planet and are beginning to descend. Uh, your active cam, your passive camouflage is working over time. Uh, roughly around the time you receive a one-way text communication saying, uh, Zealous Armada incoming, unable to negotiate ceasefire. Uh, fly safe. XOXO, the XO. <laughs> Temporary. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, and which point the uh, the fleet engagements begin. The Zealous Armada is very, very well organized. And the uh, USS Nighthawk is picking up a significant amount of intership communication. And it appears that there is some sort of artificial intelligence um, while not actively driving the ships, but more like guiding and providing advice. Um, the the Vitars are responding with military precision, but their ships are not as well made, and it's not long before several of them begin to be destroyed. And that's about the right amount for now. <clears throat> so you are uh, beginning to drop into Halo, uh, the or high altitude low oxygen jump I believe is what it's called and uh, uh, Erkin um, mm -hmm. you, uh, just as you reach about 33,000 feet or so uh, you f see the city in the distance and it looks something like this uh, a massive city has um, taken over much of the northern continent uh, the high point is the spire in the central or in the center of which there are several different areas that have been uh, pockmarked with explosions and you see several lander craft uh, taking off and landing again as the Vitars continue to deploy reinforcements are we inside the shield hmm. uh, you will be inside the shield fairly quickly okay. and we will drop you into the schematics <clears throat> where so where would you like to put the shuttle? Uh, the outskirts, the industrial, and the bulwark are currently all under um, the control of the Vitars. And that is where a significant amount of fire is being exchanged. So outskirts, industrial would be safe landing zones. Bulwark, not so much. You could aim for the spire if you wish, or the gallery. Or you could try to sneak in from behind and land it in the rad works or the central power area. I would suggest the central power area. If they're being held by the Zell and we still look like Starfleet officers, it's probably the safest place for us to go. He's flying the shuttle. And he gets to decide where we land. Fair enough. Uh, so you're aiming for central power? Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. I will just use the captain's token to indicate where you guys are. Okay, so as luck would have it, I'm the team underground, under in the bunker. Have you guys found out what you're going to blow up yet? Central power, please not central power, please not central power. <laughs> yeah, we were going to basically set it as off as far as we could in the area of close to the building itself. Okay. So we could, like, get while they're going to investigate, uh, we can try to get into the facility to drop the shield or get communications out. Okay. Uh, sorry, what was that, Nadan? Uh, divide and conquer, I said. Ah, good idea. Okay. Uh, so this will be a uh, control plus security test. I think this is the most security test I've had you guys roll. Cool. With a difficulty of two, uh, difficulty three if you want to be stealthy about it. I'll take the lead, and I can be. I want. I want to try to be stealthy about it. Okay. Uh, do you have explosives, infiltration, something like that for a focus? 
Oh, you asked such a good question. No, but I do have stealth. Okay. Um, I will allow <laughs> stealth to work in this instance. So that uh, control security. And you have one momentum. Why is it not popping up? Hold on one second. Mm -hmm. I think my pop-up filter has come for me. Oh, fun. There we go. <clears throat> and, um... Ooh, complication. I will help as soon as I get rid of Kovacs. Kovacs, over there! Go away! Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> Okay. Oh. oh. Okay. Okay. Oh, so, dear. um, could you, uh, each one of you, and this also includes uh, Mr. Harris, if you can each roll me a fitness plus security test with a difficulty of two, please. So each one of you. And the one that succeeds it the most will get to add that into the momentum pool. And if you have something like uh, reflexes or demolitions, something like that would be good here. Alas, no. Okay. Okay. Okay, and who's rolling Mr. Watson? Or Mr. Harris, I should say. Roger Harris. I have Harris. Okay. We find him again. Oh, there he's he is. way down at the bottom. All the way at the bottom. And fitness security. Mm -hmm. And focuses. Um, so if you have anything like demolitions or reflexes, acrobatics, pretty sure he doesn't. Not even close. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Holy shit! Oh, dear. <laughs> okay, that's a significant amount of uh, explosives. Uh, thankfully, so, uh, Mr. Paran, you are able to leap out of the way as quickly as possible, realizing that there is something wrong with the tricorder. Actually, in second fact, uh, just as the explosive is about to go off, you realize that it is very close to a, a wall of munitions. Oh. Um, you are able to run away. And if you, and the sadly Miss Nadan and um, Mr. Harris are not, as the tri as the tricorder bomb goes off, so does uh, several grenades. And the, that would be dealing you each um, ten points of damage. Um, now, uh, which actually might be enough to kill some of you. So I would strongly I would strongly suggest burning determination in order to. Uh, you would take the injury, but you would continue to function. <laughs> Can I ask a stupid question? No stupid questions here, but feel free to. Ask. How do I know how much? Because uh, it's not like it's not it's not a you know it's not like five e. There's no hit points, so I don't know like. So do I know how much damage I can take? On your character sheet, there should be a stress. Um, section. Yes. Uh, how many little um, bubbles are there? Um, Twelve. Twelve? Okay. So that's how many quote-unquote hit points you have. Gotcha. Um, if you take five points of damage from a single source, you take an injury, and you can go down. Um, you can burn, or you can spend your point of determination to keep going despite the injury, but if and then take the injury and whatever else damage you'd get. But if you take any more damage, you die. And I feel really bad throwing the new character into the potential you die situation. But that's, that's okay. Yeah. We die, if she dies early, I'm not attached to her yet. So really, I can't lose here. That is true. Um, 
But that's what you recommend is burn, burning the point of determination? I would strongly recommend that, yeah. All right. Well, who am I to blow against the wind? I'll do that. Okay. Uh, Mr. Harris sadly has no de de determination to spend. Uh, so he will take the full 10 points of damage and he is knocked out cold. Um, oh. Bleeding rather profusely. Can I, can I use my value mm -hmm. and um, like basically soak her damage? Oh. Um, tell you what, I will allow you to soak half of it. Okay. So, um, so that would be so five points to you and five points to Nadine or Nadan. Now I have resistance of two. Ah. <laughs> you do indeed have resistance of two. Although I thought it was resistance one or it might have been. Let me double check. I was going to say, I thought the thing you sent me was two. I could be. That could very well be. It was a I'll very busy check. last couple of days. Anyways, yeah. So your resistance obviously would soak up some of the damage. Okay. Uh, let's see. Because I want to use my value, let no harm come to my crew. Fair enough. Ah. And I'm going to jump in the way and take the damage. Yeah, so you have a resistance of one. And okay. if there were extreme heats or cold, you would have further resistance. However, I got you. A bomb does not count as extreme heat. <laughs> I think it does. I thought <laughs> I will fight. <laughs> uh, yeah. So you're in. You're wounded, but still fine. And Nadan is injured, but carrying on. Um, Nadan, you take a. Let's roll. Actually, Nadan, please roll me one d six, please. And you can. Uh, yes. <clears throat> Uh, oh, yeah, forward slash in front. Four. Now then you capture a significant amount of shrapnel in one of your legs. Uh, your right leg, if it means anything. So you are... Uh, so for the... Yeah. For the time being, if you could just add injured right leg to your traits. Just to keep it. track of it. Okay. Sorry, what are my traits? I was just going to put in injuries. Oh, that, actually, that makes more sense. I rarely ever use the injuries, so far better. There you go. Cool. And poor Harris is unconscious, and the explosion has alerted several of the Zell folk. All right. Can I pick him up and start moving? You can certainly do that. And because you're android, I will just say that you are able to... Firemen carry him with decent ease. Okay. Um, Miss. Uh, so, what are you guys going to do now? Get out of the way. Okay. Hide. Yeah, I think hide. Hide is hide. Hide is a good one. So that would be a control security and difficulty of two. However, I'm going to spend some threat and increase the complication range sixteen to twenty. So who's taking the lead? I'll take the lead on this. Okay. So I'm... Hiding is not stealthy, is it? Oh, no, that is quite the... Uh, hiding is the na mere definition of stealthy, so I'll allow that. All right, How cool. about survival? <laughs> yeah, um, I I'll, I'd allow survival, too. Okay. Okay, so that is a success. So you make the success, and you do get that uh, zero is actually a complication. So you are successfully hidden. Um, however, the Zell are not, instead of leaving the bunker to investigate, all of the patrollies, all the patro ah, all of the zealous that are patrolling instead converge upon your location in an attempt to find you. And it's at this point that you guys have, uh, that the away team have disembarked the shuttle, thrown a tarpaulin over it, or, you know, leave passive uh, camouflage active. And Mr. Singral, you are, uh, both you and Coax, Im are immediately keened to the emotional state of um, several uh, life signs. 
Most of them are Vitars or Zell. And I would like you to each to roll me a Presence plus Command test to see if you can pick out the away team. This is going to be a difficulty of three, just given all the chaos that's going around. And whichever one succeeds the most adds their pull to the momentum. Would any of my focuses apply here for this role? Um, do you have empathy or something along those lines? Um, I mean, I have, reading? Pa I have pattern recognition and investigation. And I think I'm going to make a case for, for myself for pattern recognition because I'm looking yeah. specifically for Federation away team members. I would allow pattern rec recognition. Okay. Um, and Mr. Coax, do you have any focus that may apply? Uh, back to that. Difficulty of... I think I set difficulty three. <clears throat> okay. Cosmetic surgery? Uh, no. <laughs> you might not. It doesn't sound like you have one. I don't think so, no. Okay. Uh, then uh, presence plus command. Uh, nope, you need to roll me a full full test. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Yep, my apologies. F uh, full test. Or, actually, now, on second thought, because you're two Bajorans working in concert, I will allow the assist to work. And you are able to pick up the uh, thought patterns of two individuals. Uh, they appear to be fairly deep below the city. Um, and fairly quick after your... Um, ah, fairly quick after you land, uh, you, the shuttle's tricorders rep, uh, wrecking, ah, pick up a decent-sized explosion coming from a fortified bunker that is several stories below you. And they're, the thought patterns immediately turn to panic, and one winks out completely. Well, I mean, there are the, the rest of the uh, the crew of the Black Shield is in danger, so we better get a move on here. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to make, even though it's incredibly risky, to use the shuttle sensors to do a uh, blind transport underground? Or is that just not something we have the fidelity for? Now that you're on the surface, I would say that such a thing is possible. Um, the shuttle, I believe, only has two transporter pads, so it would be done in sequence, or you could try beaming them out, one or the other. That's uh, probably best if we could actually be, try to beam them out first if we could get a lock. Okay. But we'll see. Well, um, let's see how good the shuttle sensors are now that you have a general idea where they might be. Uh, this is going to be a sensors plus medicine test for the... Er, insight plus medicine to pick up where the life signs are, and the shuttle can assist with sensors medicine. And this is going to be a difficulty of uh, difficulty of three test. Okay, shuttle assists. Probably best for Coax to roll that. That's what I was. I'm just yeah. getting it ready. <laughs> I mean, I'm good, but I'm not chief medical officer. Good. Oh wow! Okay, yes. that is four successes, so one momentum. <clears throat> You are able Captain, to... I think we got the life signs. Yes. You are able to determine uh, three Federation com badges. Uh, all in a tight group, all within the bunker, fairly near the... Uh, fairly close to the epicenter of the explosion. Uh, one of their life signs is not looking all that good. What, the other life sign is looking healthy. The third is looking positively ar artificial. Well, no, actually, because he's def he's dis he is disguising himself from the upper brass, so I will say that it is does appear to be a functional life sign. Okay, well, that just makes my job more difficult, Commander Troll. 
If I if they're all blind in that case, then we'll probably try to beam out the wounded first. So let's beam out uh, the most faint life side and the one one of the individuals. Okay. Um, in which case, if you, um, who wants to run the transporter? Well, we do have an engineering character that we brought with us, right? Liza No, or is that um, how I pronounce her name? I believe she's, she's security. a security. Oh, security. She's security. I'yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, Tanara. Still better than Kulox. I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> ah. Did someone bring Rainy? Uh, no one Did brought someone? Rainy. Did not bring Rainy. We didn't think that we needed to use the transporters here. Okay, so nobody here has a great engineering score to operate these things. And it's certainly not the captain. So. Uh, <laughs> thankfully, you have uh, three, three characters present who happen to have determination. That is true. Uh, it would be a difficulty of three tests to bring them up. You could have a, a Nara do it. That's probably for the best here. She has an engineering of uh, two, right? Mm -hmm. Which is, I think, is the highest anybody else has here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nara will use um, the value of protect the pride. Okay. And you said it would be control engineering? Uh, control engineering. Ships can assist with sensors engineering. With no. I'm going to use a, a determine. I'm sorry, one of the uh, momentums. Okay. And if you succeed this, I will say that this chest test will work for all of them. And there's four successes. What does the ship give you? And the ship would have been what? Uh, sensors engineering. Well, the or shuttle the then. Or shuttle, yeah. Yeah, the shuttle. Yeah, the shuttle. <clears throat> Nothing from the shuttle, but you get one point of momentum, so that point you spend, you get it right back. Um, now, Nadan and... Um, sorry, still figuring out remembering names. Paylor? Paylor? No. Hanara would have got a total of six. Six successes? They burned their oh, uh, right. termination. Yes. My yeah. apologies. Um, oh, no problem. Oh, okay. So you burned determination and got mo 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 a third dice. Ah, okay. So that third dice would have cost two momentum. So you get three momentum from that. So, yeah. Cool. Um... Uh, Mr. Paran and Miss Nadan, if you could each roll me one d twenty, please. Oh fuck! I'll get I'll get better at this. That's okay. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I don't remember how to do that either. Uh, forward slash there. roll. Uh, here, I'll put it in Discord. Okay, 19 for Nadan. And 11 for Paran. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, Mr. Paran, you are carrying the unconscious Mr. Harris on your shoulder and sort of supporting uh, Lieutenant Nadan as you shuffle your way through a dense uh, catacomb of weapons and other munitions that look kind of creepy. Uh, escaping okay. escaping the uh, encroaching patrol. Uh, your load immediately gets lighter, however, as both um, Lieutenant Nadan and Mr. Harris mater dematerialize. I start looking around... <laughs> And then on board the shuttle, we have the shuttle interior. It's here. Okay, we have a bunch of people here. We have these guys here. Sorry, just getting tokens into place. Dang it. 
Dang it, Discord, please cooperate. There we go. So, we have you two here. And Hanara looks up with a bit of a glee as her um, cat eyes uh, sparkle with the success as two individuals beam materialize on the transporter pad. There we go. Ensign Harris, who is completely unconscious, and a female Trill, who is sort of immediately stumbles to support herself, but writes herself almost immediately. Listen, there was one other person with us. We have to go back and get him. All in due time. We beamed you out, and you're the only license that we could get at this point. We'll try to go back for your other friend. Well, let's get introduction out of the way. Captain Singral, crew of the Nighthawk. You are? Lieutenant Adam, I'm not leaving without that man. We go back for him or we don't leave here. Oh, believe me, Lieutenant, we're not leaving this planet for quite some time. Uh, at this point, Hanara basically barks at you to leave the pad. Or hisses, I guess. Growl, yeah. Growls. Yeah. Snarls. <laughs> so, yeah. As the transporter, roughly a minute passes, um, and then the individual, the, ah, sorry, losing my tongue. Let me find it again. <clears throat> Mr. Paran, you have come to the right conclusion that everybody else has beamed away. And if you stand perfectly still, chances are you will be beamed away as well. And thankfully, your hypothesis proves correct. <laughs> Yay! Yay. Um, I should note that now Ensign Harris is sort of bleeding all over your transporter pad. Someone might want to fix him. Well, get to work, uh, co <laughs> yeah. you. You're gonna let this man bleed all over my floor? All over my shuttle? <laughs> uh, this is going to be a um, because it's in the field, this will be a daring plus medicine test for you, Mr. Coax. Difficulty of two. Because I'd taking... also like to assist. Okay. I mean, I do have combat mech, so... Perfect. Yep, uh, he's taken a great deal of shrapnel into his uh, chest area. I'm assuming emergency medicine will... Definitely. <sighs> So what would be rolling for this? Is um, a control a check? Daring plus medicine. Daring medicine. Yeah. Gotcha. Difficulty two. I do not have a focus that will help me out here, but I'm assisting anyway. I so. thought you had emergency medicine. No, or, he has emergency oh. medicine. I'm assisting. <laughs> ah, yes. But you have great doctor skill too, John. Okay, and there's the two for Mr. Coox. All right, a couple passes with the with dermal regenerators, a little time with some forceps, picking out all of the uh, shrapnel in Mr. Harris's chest, and he has become stabilized. It will take a proper sick bay to get rid of all the scarring, but he is once again uh, alive, although he's unconscious for the moment. Okay, I want to take a look at her leg right away. Okay. Um, yeah, feel free to run another... Uh, this will be difficulty one. Okay. Um, this could either be daring or control medicine because, well, she's not going to die. If we I'm don't worried. know that. There's still time. Yeah. <laughs> Infections are a pain. Infections, yeah. If I wanted to use combat medic to have... Ensign Harris regained stress to bring him back to full consciousness. Well, consciousness, could I? Uh, run, remind me again what combat medic does. Uh, <laughs> characters' abilities in the in field medicine and battle triage. Blah blah blah. Okay, whenever a character attempts the first aid task, they may spend one point of momentum to cause the recipient to regain points of stress equal to the number of the character's medicine discipline. A character may only regain stress in this way once per soon. <laughs> That sounds like a good thing to, for me, so spend that point of momentum, and he'll gain back whatever your mo medicine is. 
Oh, I got a medicine of four here. Okay. You know what you were saying about that whole infection thing? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, bummer. Okay. So the... Uh, so congratulations, your momentum... Or, uh, your... Watch the mic, please, there, Bashir. Um, the... Uh, where was I? Right. The leg is once again operational. Um, however, it, it it is a still a distracting um, sort of a distracting pain in it, even though Coox claims 100% that your leg is 100% functional. It still hurts. Nothing well. like having a permanent scar on your first mission. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. Can I? Do we have the time for me to assist to just grab a second opinion, or I mean, we're going to roll with this? You're welcome. I mean, you're the captain. You can... Oh, fantastic. At this point, the mission is completely in your hands. Then I am going to go take a look at her leg, because we do have all these people here right now. Okay. But I'm, I, I'll just assist. I won't uh, do a full roll here. I appreciate your efforts. Rip. Well. Yeah. Captain tries. Yeah. Well. You have to def you have to defer to the chief medical officer's opinion on this one, Captain. Erkin coughs from his chair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Erkin, as you are watch paying attention, or as this is going on behind you, uh, you're seeing se several uh, zealous shuttles have broken through the um, lines of engagement, and mm -hmm. are bringing death. Not only are they bringing down fresh zealous troops, they are destroying several of the Vitars landing shuttles. That's why I'm coughing. Ahem, <clears throat> Captain, you might want to look at this. Well, I'll go ahead and then look outside and look at sensors. Well, I'm going to go ahead and turn back to the rest of the crew of the Black Shield and just ask, and I'll say to them, well, in any case, uh, I completed my part of the evac mission, but I have to remind—I have to tell you that this mission isn't over. If you wish to return to the Black Shield, you have—you have that ability to do so. Uh, however, it can either fly or transport you out. But there is a huge planetary weapon, and it needs to be disabled because I think we could all agree that it's probably a bad idea if it falls into either the Vitars or the, the or the Zell's hands. My—I—they're pretty, you know, pretty fighting at each other right now and it's probably unwise to let the winner get whatever the spoils of this planet may happen to be so we're just going to deny the fun for all of them and with that i need your help but if you don't i'm not going to order this you guys are injured i am unfamiliar with both these species but my primary mission was to get the information about the weapon so i plan on doing cap well, very well then. That's one person. I, I appreciate your assessment of the of the situation, Captain. If, with your permission, I'd like to join you on the continuation of this mission. Understood, Lieutenant. Well, Kovacs that... is like looking at the android, just like touching it and feeling it and getting all excited, like asking questions while the captain's talking, like how he works and. <laughs> Well, since I did force Ensign Harris back to consciousness, I am going to try to get his assessment here. Whether or not it's going to... If he wants to... If he was, feels like he could participate, I'll have him along. Unless Coax says no, if he's not in that... If he's not in good enough shape. I mean, he's not going to die, but... he is. At the same time, I think he might... It might be better for him to rest again. I think he probably needs rest and a proper uh, medical facility to recuperate. Well, fine then. He gets to miss out on the fun. The rest of you, you're with me. Understood, Captain. Okay. So, I'll go ahead, GM. I don't mean to interrupt. No, it's all right. Um, while all this is going on, the... Uh, the Zealous have begun deploying to the outer, ci outer city. And we'll just bring you back to the schematics to show you the real-time zone control. <clears throat> so the bunker is still well in... So the points of 
that are necessary for disabling the weapon are still under zealous control. The Vitars, however, have broken through the bulwark in, and have entered the cesspit and are now fighting their way through the central power stations. All right, but we are aware that uh, that definitely everything that we do know about uh, the location, these locations, they are specifically Zell controlled, right? That is correct. The control systems for the weapon uh, are either in the bunker or in the spire. Eliminating one bo or both would be sufficient to knock the weapon offline. Well, I don't want it just offline. I want it comp I want to damage it to make sure if the if there is ever any chance of repair, it would be incredibly difficult, if okay. not impossible. Okay. What about the shield, con the city shield controls? Sh oh, that's the easy part. Uh, city shield controls take the power, and uh, you happen to be in central power right now. Because if we could get disable the shields for a brief moment, then the Nighthawk could, could torpedo the spire, Captain. <sighs> That's going to spark an incident, but it may be the. I still want to try to get this done on the ground. If we go ahead and launch a torpedo, that is a clear act of aggression. I mean, they're pretty distracted right now. Is it still something they're going to find out after the fact? And that's not really a, co really a topic of conversation I want to get into with either species. But. It's still best and prudent if we can get Nighthawk eyes on this while we do command, so I will calm uh, Commander Helsing. If it, or unless we can't get through the shield this way because it's still up, right? That's correct. The, okay, the shield is still up, present, preventing the communication. I recall. Well, in oh. any case, it's still probably best for us to get the shield down anyway. I should, however, say that that was before you actually had a full-powered shuttlecraft at your disposal. So, you could open communications, it would just be an increased difficulty test. If only we had someone with science on board. <laughs> mm. Oh. Yes, you know, I have a background and I'm sciencey. All right. Do you have communications or shield modulations or something like that? Oh, such a good question you ask. I'm the GM. Um... I'm supposed to. <laughs> it's in the job time. Yeah. What was the? I have. Uh, what was the, qu what was um, the question? So, do you have focuses that would allow you to boost communication systems or punch through shields or something like that? Unless you count investigative techniques, no. Not really. Uh, what about Mr. Poran? Uh, computers, cybernetics, survival, covert operations, infiltration, interrogation. Nothing. <laughs> no, not really. But still, you have better science-y scores than the rest of the party, so... I you... have one in science. Oh. oh. I, have no, I don't think so. Okay, Miss Nadan, you're taking the lead on this. Yep. I'm gonna after this session, so we know. I'm gonna. I'll. T I'll. D I'll message you about. This. I'm gonna redo my focuses, understanding the context of things a little better now. Yeah, we'll I talk think about it later. that. That that's fine. We can chat about that. Yeah, we'll discuss. Okay, so science and. Uh, uh, let's see. This is going to be a control plus science test, and someone can assist, or no, actually, ships can assist with communications plus science. Okay, I have the ship. <laughs> Well, yeah. that's nice. Uh, that's, God. All, that's two momentum <laughs> already. Communications and science. Nothing from the ship, but you don't need it because Nadan's a wizard on that on the systems. What can I say? I love science. Apparently. Okay, so that's two extra momentum. And you are able to establish a link or a discrete link to the USS Nighthawk. Uh, Mr. Helsing, you are watching this um, uh, train wreck in space, I guess might be the best way to say it. And all of a sudden, um, Vault, uh, Ensign Ranny pipes up, uh, Sir, we're receiving a tight band communication from the surface. 
It's from the shuttle? Yes, sir. Shuttle, what's your status? Yo, we have... Uh, how's my ship doing, Commander? Ship's how's doing great, sir. It's getting mighty busy up here. We haven't engaged, but we're trying to stab. We tried to make peace between the two of them. The zealous have said this is a this planet's been under their claim for decades and is key to the defense of their four home their four home planets. And we haven't started contacting the Vatar yet, but offered to try to negotiate, mediate a peace between them, the Zealous would have nothing to do about it. How are you doing down there? Well, we've retrieved the Black Shield crew members, but we still need to disable the planetary weapon. So I need some assistance, whether that be a distraction or something else. Do you want us to try to engage the planetary system directly? If you do so, make it sure that it doesn't necessarily seem like you're showing allegiance to either side in this battle. I still want to try to remain as neutral as possible, and I don't want to make anything look like an aggressive mood between the Zell or between the Zealous or the Vatars. We do have, there are two separate locations that we have to check before we're able to disable the super weapon. I'm going to beam them to the Nighthawk, and I'll come see you in shortly when we decide a plan of action. In either case, it's probably best for you to make, make a do of the systems available to you. Seem to be channeling Urkin. Must be rubbing off on me. <laughs> but I think we can do what we can up here. How long do you think you'll be able to keep this line open? Uh, we could go at any moment, but I mean, I'm, I'll just look into Dan. She's the one that established it. I mean, who did? Oh, my apologies. <laughs> Sir, I can keep it going for as long as we're not interrupted or unless it blows on me. I can do the best that I can. Roger, we'll keep trying to try to keep as much of it open on our end as we can. Actually, a thought does cross my mind. Can we beam more Nighthawk personnel from pad to pad and then try to beam them into the secondary location here? Through the shields? So we could hit both at once? That through would, the shields? Through the shields would be impossible. It's basically br tw twisting every law of physics that Nadan has to even keep a secure line open. All right, then we're breaking the shields then. Yeah, break them. All right. Oh, yeah. And You're breaking the shields or am I breaking the shields? I am breaking the shields. Okay, because we can break the shields as well. I mean, if we can, if we can go ahead and uh, disable them without from a distance, then we're gonna go ahead and do that. Roger. We, there must be so we definitely have some munitions on the ship, so I'll, I'll get Jefferson spun up into the uh, Spectre just in case. Fantastic. Sign roll out. Okay. Fantastic. Sounds like we have an action plan. How do you wish to execute said plan, Captain? Well, I know we didn't necessarily bring any uh, heavy munitions with us uh, before we entered the shuttle, but there must be some at least small explosives that we could replicate here. What's the biggest thing you'll give me, GM? Um, I would give you... Let's see. You would have uh, phaser rifles in the shuttle armory if you want to you know, get a little more hands-on with things. And I would give you, um, with the proper authorization, and since you're the captain, you can give it, I would say that the shuttle's replicators could replicate something along the lines of C4. All right, then. Well, let's go ahead and replicate C4, and let's see if we could replicate some other... Uh, a simpler apparatus so we could actually attach it from a distance. Not quite cra crazy 24th or century... Uh, energy-based, uh, you know, laser lock-on, but something that will allow us to definitely just shoot it if, if necessary and blow it up remotely. Okay, so like a remote detonator? Mm -hmm. Easy enough to do. I mean, we could do Perhaps. that in the 20th century, so yeah. But I mean, a remote detonator, but I don't want to manually attach it as, if I, to be more specific. Ah, you want a drone. Perhaps. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, well, um, you know, Mr. Uh, Mr. Paran is artificial. He might work as a drone. Nope. That's me going. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's wow. Uh, I'm a horrible person. Um, let's see. Using the tools you have available, um, replicating a small drone is possible. Um, it would just take a little bit of time for all the pieces to be assembled and created. Well, let's get it started because we're, you know, we got we got no other time to waste. Okay. So let me see. How many, one, two, three, one there. Uh, so if someone could please roll me a control plus engineering test, and I will let you set the difficulty because depending on how high the difficulty is depends on how little time passes. So if you set the task at difficulty zero, fantastic. But that also means a couple hours is going to go by. Well, we have four momentum here. I'm going to see how now is probably going to be able to do that role. So if necessary, she has a determination that she could call us and she still hasn't used it yet. Uh, right? No, she did use pr- uh, pride. Oh, or, yeah. my bad. Yep. Anyway. I'll still say she gets to uh, go ahead and roll it, and let's make this a difficulty three. Okay. So, Nar is rolling it? Yes. Okay, so difficulty three. So, if successful, it will take about 15 minutes to build. Cool. Okay, can I assist with cybernetics? Yes, you certainly can. Cybernetics would be a very good task, I would think. Control engineering? Control engineering. Okay, so... And infiltration as a focus? That's sort of pushing it. Do you have gadgetry or something along those lines? I have hand phasers. It might be best if Mr. Poran takes the lead on this, then. (laughs) uh, Maybe not. All right, well, I'll go ahead and use one die of momentum. You said it was a difficulty four to begin with. That is correct. Oh, no, difficulty three to begin with. Sorry. I'm going to use two die of momentum. Okay, so... uh, So three three momentum momentum for two die. Okay. Cha-ching! There, there, okay. So you, uh, you get one momentum back, and you get a nice little scrappy drone. His name is Scrappy, sir. <clears throat> okay, so you, stra- you strap the bombs to a, a rover-style drone. And so as you have been doing this, the Vitars have been pushing in further. The half-strength team in the ga- v- Zealous ha- in the gallery have sadly fallen, and the Vitars begin to assert their dominance inside the city proper. However, fresh Zealous reinforcements are beginning to push in from uh, the Zealous dropships. Well, in any case, they haven't hit uh, Central Power yet, so... Nope, not yet. It's time for us to make our move. Okay, how do you guys want to move? Probably best to see if we could just transport there, and it's not underground, so... So, because it's so close, I will just say that that will be a difficulty one test. Oh, crap. So, that would mean that Hanara would stay behind? To operate the transporter? Roger. Yeah. Okay. I'm grabbing one of the phaser rifles from storage. Okay, so someone's taken it so everyone could take it if they wish because only one person needs to take it for me to get the threat. So. I'll grab one as well. Oh, yeah. All right. I mean, we're all... We're all pretty much have to be... Ready. Yep. Saddle up. Lock and load. All right. So, difficulty one, control engineering. Yes, please. Uh, Shuttle can assist with sensors engineering. One more thing before we transfer it. Mm-hmm. Does Erkin want to come with us, or does he want to stay here to pilot the shuttle in case he's needed? Because only one person needs to be here, which is going to be Hanara, at least to operate the transports. But in any case, 
if this is successful, I mean, he could leave to the to the other location. But I'm just gonna ask him. Well, we are like they are actively bombing shuttle pads. Yeah. Um. I would say, like, can we can we leave Koax and take her again? <laughs> Or I think you can, medical, or medical leave personnel is more important than me. I mean, I I'm handy with a phaser, but we're not shut. We're not light on firepower. Yeah, Hanara has one in con, so they can fly if need be. But Koax probably has a one in con as well. What about Noel? She'd be going out on the mission, I guess. Well, I don't know if she's useful to stay behind. She's got two in the con, so. Ah. Then you have both your security members on board. That's true. Healthy security members. All right, then we're leaving it as is. Okay. Okay. Roger, and I'll take one die of one momentum for one extra die. Okay. Okay, so three successes means... Actually, someone roll the ship, please. Uh, Sensors engineering. Yeah, I got it. Okay, four successes, so three momentum. I think you're now maxed out. Or maxed out. Cool. Six or maxed seven. Uh, six is maximum. Okay. Okay. So because I only have one ruined set piece, we are now here. Woo. Okay, so you are not here. However, you are. Might have found our new transporter chief. <laughs> Seconded. <laughs> you guys energize out or inside several lar uh, a structure containing several large generators. Uh, these generators are, despite all of the action going on around them, these generators have remained powered on and appear not to be touched. Um, however, the, your tr uh, proximity sensors are quick to warn you that there are several Vitar uh, soldiers passing through the area. Well, make sure we can modulate our... We're going to hear some techno bubble here. Let's modulate our tricorder frequencies to... Our tricorder frequencies to make sure we're invisible, at least to their sensors. And let's continue to be on the move so we can uh, take down the ship. Okay. Make sure we avoid any other patrols in the process. Okay, uh, this will be a um, a control plus security test, difficulty of two. Someone can lead and one person can assist. I'll go ahead and lead this. Okay. okay. Can, can, one second, one second. Can I give you a threat and say that we had, uh, we recharged, the, got new batteries for our cell suits? Oh, yes, you remembered that offhand comment I made. Yes, you would have recharged. Uh, so you have two stealth suits. Okay. Yeah, both uh, Mr. Paran and Miss Nadan are e equipped with stealth suits, so they don't have to make the test if they don't want to. I would do it. Okay. Still, help out with everyone else. Cool. I'm a, I'm a stealthy gal. I'm a yes. team player. Yes, you are. <laughs> I Remind think, me, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, this is going to be control plus uh, control plus security. Difficulty thank two. You, sorry. That's all right. So, captain said he was going to roll, and then you can assist the captain. Yep. Control command, security. Mm-hmm. All right. Fantastic. Obviously, my focus of undercover operations would apply here. Absolutely. Okay, uh, it's one point of momentum, but you're already maxed out, so that is just floating. Uh, if you can't think of anything to spend it on, it's just going to go away. Quick, someone think of something. I'm delegating. Uh, do they seem to be, are they surrounded or are surrounding or protecting a thing? Um, looks like they are using it as a thorough. Looks like they're using it as more as a thoroughfare. Okay. Uh, they've secured this area and they're moving into the next uh, war zone. Okay. 
There, I asked the one floating momentum question. Good enough. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yep. Not entirely sure it could have been used in that essence, but hey, GM Fiat. Okay. okay. Uh, you guys uh, press up against the wall of a few of the generators as a team of six Vitars trundle past you in disorganized, um, or disorganized fashion. And as soon as they're gone, you guys are believe that you are suitably invisible. All right, let's move. Get a clear shot of the spire. It's spire, right? Yeah. Or am I? Uh, you're you're currently in central clear? power. Are you actually moving into the spire? I thought we were going to take out the power core first. Take, take down the shield, the shield before attacking. Nah, I'm sorry. I thought the power core was within the spire. My bad. Uh, nope. Se- there are several. Se- ah, they are separate areas. Next Never mind that. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. No, we're we're taking out the shield, so yeah. go into the power core. Okay. Um, the main power core seems to descend through um, throughout the entire city in a large sort of spiral um, structure. Uh, in in its center is a deep thrumming machine that seems to draw its power straight from the uh, geo- geothermal energies of the planet itself. There are several capacitors. Uh, the whole thing appears to be completely automated. Um, any any one of you could c- take a quick look at the gauges and see any numbers of processes, uh, fail-safes, and um, safety protocols. Can I access the computer to it and see what would happen if we shut it down? <laughs> Yeah, that would be a good question. Um, if you're looking, because if to... it's got so many systems and everything, I'm like, okay, so what's the what's what could go wrong <laughs> with turning it off? Well, fair enough. Um, accessing the system is fairly straightforward. There appears to be just enough chaos going on that, or maybe it's just never thought of to have been properly secured. Maybe everyone thinks that the city needs its own power, and no one should touch it. Because if they touch it, bad things happen. You know. Um, so there's any number of safety subroutines that could be taken offline. Um, the primary ones being the central cooling system. Um, the other one being the energy di- or the energy distribution manifolds. Um, the geo the geothermal energy um, uh, power converters. And um, basically, if you can take down three separate systems. And there are various uh, safety protocols. You could basically cause the generators to not shut, not explode violently, but at least shut down for um, that would, and it would be very difficult to bring back up. Of course, I, I'll relay this all back to the captain as I'm typing. Well, I acknowledged. Do your work. <laughs> Okay, uh, so this is going okay. to be an extended task to okay. shut things down. Uh, so this is going to be a work track of 16, uh, difficulty of 3, um, resistance of 2, and a magnitude of 2. Uh, so things that could be used here would be computers to identify and shut down the routines. Uh, power systems to perform a little manual overrides. Um, sabotage, just to, you know, figure out what to blow up properly. Stuff like that. I easily have computers or infiltration, so I got that. Um, it would, main task would be control and security. Um, control, uh, control security, daring security. Um, heck, even reason security. I keep forgetting that you're not actually playing Coox right now. You're playing Poran. <laughs> I'm, <looking> at... <laughs> I'm not. I'm not playing Bashir. I'm not playing Coox. <laughs> yeah, I'm just. That's wow. why I was trying to get Coox to stay on the ship so I could. I don't get him first. All right. That's Troll all sort of it. security. And someone can assist if they wish. Um. Where's the Bionaries one? Uh. Uh, does anyone wish to assist? Oh, there's two successes from Hal. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, I'll have null assist. Okay. And I would allow science to be used in place of engineering if you'd like. So control plus science. Or control security, whichever you have. Um, computers... I'm going to do control security if it's okay. Fine by me. Okay, so you have succeeded uh, the first task. So if Mr. Paran could please roll me seven challenge dice. And you have six momentums. And so you could do spend them to, say, reduce the resistance or add an additional challenge dice to the roll. Um, let's see. I'm going to reduce the resistance. Okay. I'll so, use... uh, how many momentum are you spending? One momentum would reduce by t would reduce two resistance. I'll use one. Okay. That's fine. So resistance of one. Cool. Okay. So seven challenge okay. dice, please. Okay. That is uh, six. So with the one resistance, that is still enough to achieve a breakthrough. Yes. Nice. Nice. Uh, working in concert, as the two of you have been doing so for the last couple days, because you've been forced to. Or maybe... Oh, actually, that one is Noel. Not ah, as... that's Noel. Cool. Yeah, Noel's got a better, uh, got better control. Cool. Works for me. Um, working in concert, uh, the two of you uh, lapse into a fairly steady rhythm. And you are able to bring down the cooling, the the water cooling system. And the temperature gauges begin to rise ever so uh, steadily. So we now have a work track of 11. We now have a difficulty of 2. Oh, crud, I'm sorry. This was a resistance 2 task, so the work track is actually a 10. Okay. That works. Okay, let me quickly roll something here. Hmm. Okay, um, carry on if you guys wish to roll again. Okay, so that is only one success, but this is now a difficulty two test instead of difficulty three. Uh, so if uh, Noel wishes to roll... There you go again. Okay, uh, Mr. <clears throat> Mr. Paran, please roll me another seven challenge dice. Okay. Okay, so you could spend one point of momentum to re-roll those zeros. All right, we'll do Yep. That sounds good. One of these days I'll stop giving you guys helpful hints, but hey, I like the story as much as you do, so. <laughs> <laughs> so that's four? Uh, yep, re-roll four. four. Okay, and that is six. Okay, uh, so six, um, you're not able to break through the resistance this time, but you still achieve some work on the f track. Uh, difficulty of two. Okay, let me roll. Okay. Uh, you have successfully deactivated the system that um, taps into the geothermal energies of the planet. And in doing so, the uh, power generator is now only going to be running off of its power reserves. Uh, however, in doing so, there is now an audio alarm that begins uh, sounding within the facility. Okay, um, I, start to, I start going complete like data typing <laughs> okay uh, are you uh if <gasps> yes yes you totally do wow <laughs> holy crits batman okay <laughs> yes <laughs> yes i could have had that better oh good lord okay um so you have four momentum um so you get what uh, let's see, this is difficulty two. You get another two, three momentum from this. So you are maxed out and you have one floating. So okay. what do you want to spend? The, spend the floating first and then anything else All right, after. I will spend the floating to uh, drop the resistance. Okay. 
and how many do I add? To, uh, how many do I need to use to add die? To I the... believe it is one momentum per challenge dice you wish to add. Okay, so I am going to add three. Okay, uh, let's see. So you six. You're now down to three momentum. Okay, so roll me okay. seven, ten. ten challenge dice. Yeah, you go complete data, and you're working on four different panels at once um, as uh, Noel is struggling to even keep up with one. Uh, you've disabled five different systems and their redundancies and shut down the alarm. Congratulations. Woo. <clears throat> um, this, div this facility is going to overload and enter an emergency protective shutdown. In roughly 10 minutes, that thanks to everything you've done. Um, the protective shutdown is going to basically mean it's going to have to be started from cold, which is going to be hours and hours of work, even if people had the instruction manuals. Captain, the shield is down. <laughs> well, shield will be down in about 10 minutes. Well, I can wait. We got what we came here for. Let's start moving to another one of these locations. In about 10 minutes at Nighthawk, go scout the second. Okay. Well, let's cut back to the city schematics for a second while we plan our next sojourn. Okay, so you guys are currently in central power. Uh, you are adjacent both to the spire or to the bunker. Um, I explained uh, the situation, or explained like the when we were in the bunker, it was a small outcrop of building guarded by eight people. Um, there was roughly 32 life forms of the Zell in the facility, blah, blah, blah. And um, like I said, I explained the that's how we got hurt. Mm -hmm. So he knows what is down there. Mm. Well, I suppose probably on higher alert well you guys did fuck you guys did blow it up <laughs> so. we didn't Language do a great captain. job of it but we did really the the effort the intention was there sir respectable <laughs> well if you guys feel like going back i feel like it would be uh, some good old times to be had because <laughs> that's where we're going okay great now, how do you wish to go? You can move between zones without um, attracting attention immediately, or you can try to be stealthy. And because you guys have the tricorder stuff to, you know, hide your body signs and have two stealth suits, um, I will, if you spend two momentum, I will give that you the advantage and drop the difficulty by two. Well... I'm saying because of the essence here. And if we have the ability to move reasonably well between the zones, then I'm just going to say we're going to do so. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so you're not... Uh, just my own clarification, you're not creating the advantage? Or are you creating the advantage? Oh, no, I apologize. We are, uh, we are creating the advantage. Okay, I so... got them backwards in my head, and I said something wrong. That's no, yeah, no, we're, we're creating the event. Okay, so spend... it's been known to happen. It happens. <laughs> it's been uh, so spend two momentum, and so to move between zones now is going to be zero, or to move stealthily is one. Stealthily. Stealthily. Super fast. Super stealthily. Okay, uh, so the leader can do fitness security, and so one person can assist. Since I know where we're going, do you want me to leave? Sure. I can assist. Fantastic. Okay, that's one success from Miss Nadan and two from Hal. So two successes, or sorry, two momentum. And as you guys enter the bunker, 
all the lights go out. Ooh. The entire town goes dark. As the background thrumming of the power generator that you have become so accustomed to dies. Um, the Nighthawk in orbit, you register that the uh, city shields has uh, come down. This has uh, this has two uh, effects. The first is obviously the you know you the city can now be assailed for, with all the fun weapons that the Nighthawk has. The downside is is that now uh, the Zell. The Zealous and the Vitars are now angling for a direct drop onto the spire itself. Just a quick question. Yes. The transporters. Yes. Is there a part, could we scan the spire, since that's like the barrel of this planetary weapon? Mm -hmm. Is there a, can we scan it for a key part and then transport out that particular part oh that's that would kill the weapon but that's... we could bring it back up if we ever wanted to that's an interesting idea uh this is going to involve a uh sensors plus engineering thing and in this and if only Thashran was here but he he is over helping the black shield become operational again uh so one of the support engineers actually in this one instance, I will allow uh, Vault Rani's mining equipment focus to come into play here. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, so Vault, so if someone can pick up Miss Rani and run a sensors engineering test from her, please. I actually have her up right here. And someone so... can roll the Nighthawk and assist with uh, sensors engineering. This is going to be a difficulty of three test and you said her task would have been what again uh, insight engineering insight engineering i'm going to blow burn her value of good to go mm -hmm. okay we two and then insight engineering so you're using it just to get you a third dice that rolls a one uh, just for two successes. Okay, cool. So that's four successes. Cool. Uh, so you get one momentum out of that. Nice. Yeah. Nice. <clears throat> she brings. A, uh, she pulls up a schematic after looking at it. Uh, so this doesn't look too different than a a plasma drill, just with a far wider um, emitter array. In fact, the similarities are very, very striking. I'm surprised I haven't mined the moon with this thing. Maybe that was their intention. Anyways, um, if we were to, say, attach the... Hmm. She looks at it for a split second. While the GM tries something. <laughs> Dramatic pause. There. Uh, well... Well, sir, if we are able to, uh, to target their primary baryon coupling, those things are very difficult to reproduce, even by Federation standards. And if we can target here and here, we should be able to beam them on board, and then their spire would be taken out of commission. I say we go for it. Okay. And then once we get them on board, we strap a thermonuclear device to them. You do have a proton bomb, but that's really if you want to just commit genocide. Well, no, I don't want to do that. Including just in case the captain and everyone us. else. <laughs> yeah. Just in case the Vitaris and the, the Ze Zealous decide to start attacking us, we can threaten to destroy them. Then nobody has it. Trying to bring these people to their senses. The hard way. Fair enough. Uh, if someone could please roll Chief Zell, this is going to be a this is going to be a difficulty four test because the transporters really aren't designed to perform surgical cuts like this. And I'm going to dump some threat and increase complication range sixteen to twenty. 
or no, let's, sorry, looking at thread I have, 17 to 20 is going to be the complication range. Uh, so control engineering, and the ship can assist with sensors engineering. So, so Zell, people are counting on me. She has a determination. Uh, she does indeed, and she hasn't spent it yet. So, so we will pop that. And control engineering, and we will use three momentum for two dice. Okay, burn those momentum. Cool. Uh, and I got the ship. That's okay. Engineer. Up oh, looks. Yeah. Oh, nice, nice roll on ship. Ooh. Yeah. So five successes total. Nice. So one momentum comes back. Um, and uh, she says, "Sorry, sir, had to had to shunt them to the cargo transporter, but we have two um, we have two baryon couplings, whatever those are, in cargo bay two. Awesome. Okay. And um, now, oh, I'm sorry. Carry on. Ronnie, establish communication with the the shuttle and Captain Singraw. Mm -hmm. Okay." Um, the person that answers is Hanara, and she informs you that the rest of the away team is currently out on operations. How can you, how can she assist you, Commander? Or is Hanara a um, male? I'm not entirely sure. Hanara is a male. Oh. He, he's a cougar, based, ah, but he's, he's a male. I always mistake that for a lioness. Right. Okay. <laughs> Hanara is male. My bad. Han how can I assist you, Commander? Um, get word to Captain Singral that we have teleported on board two critical pieces of equipment for this weapon to function. Without them, it's just a big hunk of metal. Understood, sir. And Miss Captain Singral, you received this communication not two minutes later. <laughs> oh, look at that. Already doing my job for me. <laughs> All right. Speaking of doing your job, uh, you have entered the bunker. It's gone pitch black. Uh, the only person who could potentially see in the dark is uh, Mr. Perrin. Or... Uh -huh. Poran, sorry. I'll get that name right one day. <laughs> Probably about the time I have to... <laughs> Probably. Okay. So, uh, do you guys wish to achieve stab lights, move in the dark, or, you know, spend the two momentum to tell me that you... Pr foresaw this option and brought uh, night vision goggles. Well, technically, with, I mean, I guess I'm thinking, like, would the suits have, like, the little, like, oh, yes. Voyager, like, uh, flashlight things on them? Uh, your stealth suits would not, but your stealth suits would have uh, built-in... Um, sort of image enhancements. So both you and Nadan are set. The rest Would of... Would the phaser rifles, phaser rifles have flashlights. Yep. some they, type of thermal they, tracking, thermal sight? Um, I don't believe they do, to tell you the truth. I know they have stab lights or flashlights, okay. but they Massive wouldn't... Massive reach. They wouldn't have a thermal tracking of the sort, I believe. Star Trek Advanced. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> like Star Trek Stone. I mean, if you want to give, you know, if you want to give, spend the two momentum, create the advantage that you can see in the dark, you could either tie it in through the phaser rifle or night vision goggles or some cool... I said we're going to need that momentum. Let's yeah. just say that we're, we're running with the rifle's flashlights. Okay. For we still have one with, more transport with, at least. Exactly. And... We're running with we're running with the flashlights and Perrin, uh, sorry, and Dan and uh, Poran can take point considering their stealth shoot, their stealth suit optics. Okay. Plus the fact they're also invisible that kind of helps. That as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what is your objective? Are we heading to the spire or hmm. the bunker? Uh, the, your guys are in the bunker right now. Okay, that's what I thought. So we're heading to that same place we were trying to go before. Okay. Okay. I mean, I, 
Okay. Sorry. Didn't mean to interrupt. That's okay. I'm just sort of talking to myself as I sort things out. So that's sort of what we're looking at with these guys in front. And okay. There, um, because you've basically given up the idea of immediately being stealthy, there are shouts of alert. Um, you hear them echoing down the halls off to your side as several of these individuals begin to appear. Sorry, just doing token management. A couple there, a couple here. Nope. There we go. So they're coming down the tertiary junctions, as you guys have already breezed, and breezed past their in initial defenses. At the moment, though, they are not close enough to fire weapons at you. You're just hearing shouts. Push forward. Pushing Jeez. forward. Pushing okay. forward. All right. Uh, you come. Uh, it's not long until you are within sight of the central bunker within the bunker, the control structure. Uh, this is a fairly large octagonal room with two entrances, one on either side. Uh, there are two of the soldiers up front, and you can see them quite plainly because they have flashlights attached to their rifles and are using them to scan the perimeter. Naturally, they see your flashlights as well and are... Uh, bathing the four of you in harsh light. I'm going to make sure I'm on stun and fire on the one on the left. Oh, you, we are engaging in combat. Okay. Uh, this is going to be a control plus security test, please. Difficulty of two. Um, I can't remember. What does aiming do? Uh, and aim is one action. Uh, it takes up your minor action. Right. Um, and it gives you an extra die, or? I believe it allows you to re-roll one. Let me double check. Okay. Uh, let's see. Just, uh, make your test, and we'll figure that out shortly. So, sure aim. Yeah, you may re-roll a single d20 made on a on an attack before your next turn. <clears throat> mm. uh, that sounds like a good thing to re-roll, actually. Uh, so since Mr. Paran has opened up with a surprise action, you guys can all do a surprise round if you want. Seeing his lead, I will shoot uh, the other visible one. Okay. Uh, control security, difficulty two. Are you re-rolling that complication there, Hal? Yep. All right. <clears throat> nice. Okay. Eat it. <laughs> yep, so one momentum. All right. And type three Sorry. is four challenge dice plus your security. Security, eight challenge dice for me. Okay. Eight challenge dice for Urkin. Okay. Mm. You have momentum you could spend. And I... Hal, you, you hit as well. What's your security? Your security is five. You have a type two or a type three? I grabbed the rifle from okay. the thing. So, so you grab uh, nine challenge dice. Is it two momentum to reroll zeros or one? Uh, one momentum to reroll zeros. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do that then. Cool. And seven damage from Mr. Paran. Okay. Should all of us take a turn on the combat? Like, should I attack? Um, you have a surprise action, so can't yes. hurt. The only people it hurts are the Zealous. Well, that sounds good to me. I'll take that deal. Okay. Um, actually, you might not have to because both of them do enough damage to, 
that even their armor does not resist enough of it, and they both are stunned and fall asleep. Nice. So, uh, let's put them... Apparently I can't do it that way. Let's do it this way. Asleep. And asleep. <clears throat> okay, so... Um, you guys have basically one action until the zealous reinforcements from the rear appear. Okay. Um, what do you guys want to do? I'll try the door. Okay. Uh, the door mm. is... The door opens actually fairly easily. Um, doesn't appear that they were expecting a... You know, a... Yeah. They were not expecting someone to... You know, get this far. Um... <laughs> Who's rolling, uh, or who's opening the door? Me. You, okay. One fail. Uh, the other one does not... Yeah, nope, the other one does not. Nope, sorry, the 12 does fail. Uh, two uh, disruptor blasts uh, zip right by your head as your door opens, revealing... Um, two zealous who have taken up a fortified position inside the bunker. Okay. Um, you quickly uh, you quickly hear them yell, uh, freeze, drop your weapons, and then one of them goes, wait, those aren't Vitars. Who are they? And you hear oh, a shout... Yeah. Sorry. Technically, you... they can't see me. <laughs> the door just oh. opened. Oh, yeah, that's right. You're invisible. <laughs> the, yeah, so... Never mind. Uh, they I'm go, just saying, you they, know, um, they, they don't you, really they, notice anything. Thank you for the reminder. Uh, you hear them go, wait, who are they? What? There's shout, uh, shouts of confusion as the door opened on their own. Uh, one of them begins to take a uh, step out from behind their fortifications and goes to investigate the door mechanism. Huh? A grapple. You're, oh boy. Okay. Um. So this is going to be a control plus. Nope. Sorry. Uh, melee combat is daring plus security. And it's an opposed test. And because you are invisible, you will base. I'm going to say that you will, unless you roll absolutely poorly. Uh, any one success will initiate the grapple. Okay. Uh, you are grappling a zealous soldier. So you guys are asleep outside. You and you are grappling. Ain't it cute? Okay. Uh, it let the zealous lets out a shock, a shocked gasp as, without knowing what happened, he's now in a bear hug, or a headlock, or something. I basically, yeah, I want to have his like arm behind his back. I'm going to kind of use at. You know, because obviously I saw them pull disruptors, and even if they, I mean, I we could still say they fired because I would think that the door opened, they'd just probably fire at something. Yeah, anyway. reflex, but, reflex fire. Yeah, and then like so, basically, I'm going to tell the other one in there to drop his weapon. Um, there, he does not, but uh, he does shout back, Commander. Something's happening. Or, sorry, not Commander. Lieutenant is this individual. And out steps this person. Ooh. Um, now, before we actually do anything further, um, before we initiate that, uh, Nadan, are you doing anything? I was wondering if I should rush up on the other one, but... I don't know. What what would y'all recommend? Well, this guy hasn't stepped out yet, right? We don't know he's there. Yeah, yeah we don't know he's there. No, no, you, you do know there's two people there because... Two no, but we don't know the two lieutenant's shots. there, do we? Yeah, you don't know the lieutenant yet. Right. But there's the other zealous soldier. Correct. The one that's, like, 
there. So I was saying, should I rush up on him? Because we don't know that uh, Beast Boy over there is out yet. <laughs> right. Uh, <green. laughs> you, you, just, also, you also know that there's a grand total of eight life signs inside the bunker. Right. So. I I would probably recommend to try to just incapacitate him quickly. Yeah, let you me know, see if I can like put him in a, a Star Trek equivalent of a sleeper. Okay. Uh, so this is going to be a similar test. So uh, daring plus security. And if you succeed even one, if you get even one success, that will mean that he is grappled. Just because you're invisible. That does it. Okay. <clears throat> so, the, uh, just as these uh, other zealous soldier shouts for the lieutenant, uh, he finds himself similarly grappled and is unsure what the heck is going on. Only that a disembodied voice has told him to drop weapons, and now they're both grappled. <laughs> okay. Uh, outside the bunker... Let me just make sure that the stream's looking good, because I haven't been paying attention. Yeah, it's it's behind a lot. Like, oh, yeah. Uh... We are definitely dragging, but there's not much I can do about that. I think you're fine. It doesn't seem weird on my end. Yeah. Okay, cool. You haven't been dropping frames, right? Not to my knowledge. Everyone here so seems fine. fine. Yeah. We are fine. Everyone is fine. How are you? <laughs> okay, there we go. Everything seems caught up now. I think I just sort of locked up. Okay. So, uh, those of you who are outside and, you know, not invisible... Um, several zealous, zealous soldiers are making their way through the uh, causeways to the central bunker. Uh, what do you guys wish to do? Well, I'm going to direct us to move inside and close the door. Ah, okay. So you'd rather face the lions in the den. Okay. And you will do so. Are these also not technically our enemies, per se? No, they're not technically enemies. They're, at the moment, not technically allies either, so... Okay, you're inside. You have two individuals in uh, headlocks or other dis disabling moves. And out comes this guy. And he is flanked by two. Two other soldiers who are definitely ready for whatever the heck you throw at them because they're wearing some pretty ornate looking armor uh, they're covered head to toe and they are wielding some uh, nasty looking pistol or nasty looking rifles uh, the first words out of the lieutenant's mouth is what is the meaning of this so to his uh from the lieutenant's point of view, mm -hmm. uh, there's still two random people being grappled, but he yep. still doesn't have eyes on the rest of the party here. The re uh, I assume at this point, he is approaching you guys. He is approaching, seeing the two of them being grappled, and four other individuals making a beeline for the door. At least that's how I'm interpreting it based on your description. Okay, so if we're making a beeline for the door, we have not yet closed it. Correct. And you, okay. Okay. <laughs> I'd like to direct uh, Laser uh, Noah, right? I'd like to direct our other security officer here and some either Coax or Urkin to actually. I'm going to move, do the head motion, like, well, take out those other two soldiers. We're already here shooting. And at this point, at this point, I kind of just want to stop the people behind us. Okay. More shooting. Okay. More shooting. Um, More shooting. In this case, um, this case is because they are prepared. We are going to be in an in initiative for this. Um, so, you two, these two, add turn. Bloody Discord. Add turn. Add turn. Okay. Uh, so start. Uh, good guys go first, so either Alec or Noel. 
Why Alec, not? can you go first? I want to just, uh, I want to watch how this goes before I do it. Sure. Um, and remember that phaser uh, rifles have the calibrate action. Meaning oh you yeah, can, what does that do? Uh, just let me pull my screen up and I can <laughs> educate. Uh, let's see. So, uh, the calibrate option is listed somewhere. Like around 192, 193. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, it's the charge action because they made it different than ship weapons for whatever reason. Uh, let's okay. see. There we go. So, uh, you can use the prepare minor action in either way. So, you can't take cover, you can't move, etc. And you could give it either area, intense, piercing two, or vicious one. I do like the idea of finding cover. Yeah, so you could find <laughs> cover instead of, you know, charging. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll okay. find cover. Okay, uh, you duck behind, so you uh, let me roll 1d6 here. Okay, not the best cover, but you find something. Okay, uh, and I'll shoot. Okay, which one are you shooting? Mm, I'll go for Resk. Ooh, going after the head. Cool. Oh, may as well. Biggest target, lead. Sure. Uh, control security, difficulty two. Sure. No focus. And yet you still hit. But I still hit. Okay. Uh, roll me... Uh, no, eight I'm challenge dice, I believe it is. Pretty decent. Pretty decent. Okay. Eleven and four. That's a success. So, um, because of their bodyguard status, this one yells, Get out of the way, Mr. President. <laughs> <laughs> and jumps in front of the blast, so he takes the he takes the hit. Uh, his armor is resistance three, which is still enough to deal him the injury. So he gets stunned and goes down. All right, I'm gonna try to knock out the other the other zealous soldier then. Can I ask one second? Presumably they'll just jump in front of him, so save uh, the effort. Um, not quite, because we're in an initiative combat. Um, it goes good guy. Bad guy, good guy, bad guy. Oh, so... sorry. I thought you were saying good guys first, <coughs> bad guys, both good guys, and then both bad guys. My ah, bad. Yep, my apologies. And I got to jump in there, too, because I want to ask. I have quick to action, Ooh. and the exact wording of it is during the first round of any combat, you and your allies may ignore the normal cost to retain the initiative. Ah, okay. So then you can indeed force Miss Noel to go first. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Sorry. <laughs> nope. That that's a good thing to remind me of. So uh, everything I just said, uh, uh, ignore, no, it. ignore it. Ignore yeah. it. Ignore. Okay. Uh, what does Miss Noel wish to do? I'm gonna try to take out the other elves. Uh, stun the other elves. Sure. All right. Challenge dice, or not challenge dice? Uh, control security. Control security. Yeah. Oh, I have a focus in hand phasers. That works. And that's a hit. Okay, uh, roll me challenge dice. So, what's her security? Four? Uh, so, uh, on the macros tab, um, the uh, the second one from the right, yep. uh, there should be a challenge or macro called challenge dice. Yep. Yep, so click that and roll me eight challenge dice, please. Mine has also moved just to the front page, which is nice. Yeah, there's a checkbox there that says in bar, which is nice. Okay, so that's four. Uh, if you want, you could spend a momentum and re-roll those zeros. Do we think it's a good use of momentum? Oh, yes. I yeah. can tell you. All right, there we go. Yep. <laughs> re-roll. Yeah. You want to do at least five damage that puts an injury on them and takes them out. Yeah. Oh, understood. I just Stuns wanted to them, make yeah. sure we're low on momentum. We want to save yeah. it for stuff. Momentum we'll comes and goes. Yeah. All right. How do I re-roll? Sorry. So roll me four challenge dice. Gotcha. Sorry. That's okay. Okay. So seven total. Uh, these guys have resistance three, which is not enough to take them down. 
but he takes four stress. Okay, so that one is unconscious and thus out of turn. This one's turn uh, because he's annoyed. Uh, he is going to take a shot at the individual who has not hidden behind cover, a.k.a. the security guard. And he, the shot goes wide. Okay, now, um, does anyone else wish to take part in this combat? Because it's apparent that the Urk, Alec, and Noel weren't enough for the job. Oh, most definitely. I'm taking some shots here. <laughs> okay. Uh, just give me a second here and turn. Okay. Uh, Mr. Captain. So what do we have on the field? Rescue. So, uh... We have uh, the lieutenant is still up and, and running. Uh, the zealous soldier is up and has taken some damage, but not enough to knock him out. And we have one that is unconscious. All right, well, I'll shoot the other soldier then, if, because he's probably just going to protect Rask. Yeah, probably. Control security. I have no focus, so rip me. Mm-hmm. Oh, fantastic. Oh. I'm so glad I wanted to join in. Yeah. Oh. Um, Captain, I need you to please roll me a daring plus security test, please. Difficulty of one. <laughs> wow. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so, um, congratulations. Oh, You're... Um, you recognize the traditional whine of a poorly um, maintained phaser rifle in your hand as it begins to overcharge, possibly a faulty power cell. You're able to shut it down, but the darn thing overheats so quickly that um, it f the, the energy released still has to go somewhere, and it goes into your hands, burning them. Um, anything requiring a manual dexterity with your hands, for the time being, increases by one. And, by the way, you also dropped the phaser rifle. Of course. Yeah. Well, I, I will yelp and screech in pain. Ah. Oh, right. Lieutenant Resk is going to take a couple pot shots. Uh, he pulls out a fairly ornate pistol from, from a holster and is going to take a shot at Alec, who is currently hiding behind something. He could try. He could try. And he succeeds. He did. Good work, him. Yeah. Okay, so uh, how cover works in this game is you roll a number of challenge dice mm -hmm. uh, equal to the rating of the cover, in which case right now your cover rating is 2. And for each effect you roll um, negates that much damage. So, oh. Um, so I don't believe that actually negates anything. Um, if someone not partaking in immediate combat could double check that because that would be appreciated uh, let's see so he rolls that because his security isn't all that high oof that is eight points of damage to mr alec <clears throat> and i believe that is actually enough for mr alec to sustain an injury Okay. Um, so, does do we have a natural resistance, or is it just nope. all straight damage? Uh, it's all straight damage unless you decided to take body armor, which you did not. I did not. One, two, three, yeah. four, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Um, so you have a choice. You can take the injury and be out of combat, mm -hmm. in which case you're not going to die. Um, or you could take. You could uh, soldier on despite the injury, but if you take another couple, 
If you suffer enough damage to cause another injury, you die. Uh, oh, that would be sorry. That's okay. Uh, I am going to fall over and take the injury. Okay. That uh, was a big hit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, where was the? Uh, okay, so it's lethal by default. Okay, cool. Alec lets out a screech of pain as a white-hot bolt of disrupt disruptor energy punches right through the um, blah, the barricade he was hiding behind, and then right through Alec. So you are out, my f you are out, my friend. I am sorry. Don't destroy my ship. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You are. Uh, okay. Who's left? So, so me. Yep, Mr. Kovacs. Uh, well, you know, yes, Kovacs. Um. So, what? Can I jump in to like heal him? I believe you can perform a first aid task in combat. Uh, the okay. I believe the difficulty just goes up in difficulty. Um. Yeah, I'm not. So daring, daring medicine, plus medicine, difficulty, emergency medicine. Yep. Uh, this will be just be a difficulty of one, just to stabilize him. Okay. I forget. Is uh, is talking or like calming the ship in action and during a turn order? Is that an incidental? Um, as so long as you don't monologue. Okay. Oh. So. One momentum for you guys. And Alec, you're out of combat still, but stabilized. Okay. I don't believe you heal stress, though. I'm going to have to double check that stuff. I'll give it a quick look for you. Sure. Um, so, uh, let's see. I believe that's everyone who's acted in combat. I would like to calm the ship. Okay. Um, what, uh, using the shuttle as a relay, you may do so. Yes. Okay. I'd like to ask Commander Helsing to lock on to our present locations and look for the Zell life signs within this room and hold them in transporter stasis if possible. Okay, we have had about a 50-50 success rate at this sort of thing, but... We have, but we're going to keep trying. <laughs> okay. Gosh, um, Hi, sir. Let's see. So you're doing a wide area transport. Um, whoo, uh, just the, just the current Zell that we're engaged with, no, to be more specific. Yeah, that's still a significant number. Um, mm -hmm. Still deep Within below the 50 surface. meters of you, 100 meters of you. Uh, I would say within 10. And 10. Within 10. Yeah, so this is a going to be a, this is going to be a difficulty four transporter test, and I'm going to dump some extra threat to increase the complication range seventeen to twenty. All right, well that's not fun. Listen here, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna beam well, them out and erase their. Zell, so no, we're yeah, not yeah. that. <laughs> Zell has cautious engineering, so okay. I'll use a momentum. Okay. To do an extra dice. Yep. That'll trigger cautious engineering. Yep. And then some... be... Go ahead. Uh, then someone roll the ship for sensors engineering. To be more specific, I don't actually want to put them like into stasis tubes. I just want to hold them yeah. in the buffer. Yeah, I I get that. I hope Zell does. <laughs> we'll find out soon. Oh, she doesn't. No. Yeah. Well, but she... I can reroll a zero. Yeah, you can reroll one zero, and I already know which zero you'll reroll. Which re one? Which one? Which one? Oh. And who's rolling the ship? <laughs> I will roll the ship. Okay. Time for the I ship. I will take responsibility for this failure. Sensors <laughs> engineering. Uh, sensors engineering. Yes. Well, I'll be jiggered. Okay. 
that is enough to do it. <laughs> okay, uh, so... They go to pull another um, series of uh, disruptors at you, and all of a sudden their faces go wi wide with surprise as they dematerialize. And that ends combat. The, wow. the, the potential for other people to go down was too great. Can't can't have that. So make or break situation, right? <laughs> okay. Um, needless to say, you guys now have combat superiority. Uh, you guys uh, close the doors before any further uh, zealous can approach from outside, and you're still facing five. Uh, let's see. Nope. There were the two there that were taken. You now have three zealous inside the. Um, left inside the bunker they quickly look at one another um you see a couple actually no someone roll me insight plus command and if you if you happen to have like people reading uh this will be a difficulty to test and only oh. one person can roll it without any assistance is that something you want to take care of Dan, or did you have a question as insight command, you said? Insight command, yes, please. Oh, sorry, in my head it was presence uh, It was presence command, which I would have done a little better on. Someone else might want to take it. Um, pattern, pattern recognition might work. In, I'd even allow investigation. Oh, wow. That sounds like something that I actually, should take care of. Actually, oh, yeah, think so. the Bajorans could... Bajorans would actually gain a lot more insight on this, so it will be a difficulty one test for Bajorans, difficulty two test for anyone else. Well, Arcane well, is he, currently. I think the, our, our Bajoran is out of combat. I'm sorry, like, not Bajoran, Beta Z. The telepathic uh, ones. Alrighty then, then I'll go ahead and roll. Unless. Insight command. Okay, uh, three successes, so two momentum. Um, Urkin, you um, begin to... Uh, or Coax revives you, and you begin to stand up slightly stunned and shaken, and with a throbbing pain in your shoulder, uh, just to see uh, the three other Zell look quickly at one another, and Captain Singral, you... Uh, they have three different... Um, emotional personnel, emotional profiles. One wants to fight, one wants to negotiate, the other one is attempting to run away. There's a quick flash of... There's a quick flash that you're not really able to see visu um, visually, but empathetically, you're able to see something sort of like fiber optic communication between them. And then all of a sudden, they all enter the same mindset of dropping the weapons, raising their hands, and surrendering. Well, I assure you, I mean you no harm, and this will all be over quick. Please go stand by with your friends. What friends? They're all gone. Oh, well, good point. <laughs> Just stand in that corner over there. <laughs> Just done one got beamed up as well um yeah the well oh, cool. the ones outside the bunker are still outside the bunker yeah but i think i've got whoever i think i figured the numbers out right i could be wrong either way it's late and i'm not going to rethink my processes at this stage so uh they back away leaving you uh, unfettered access to a host of um control systems that are monitoring system def or weapon defenses, or weapon systems, uh, shield readings, etc., all on a redundant power supply, which is why this, why these consoles are still active. Well, let's finish what we came here for. Take everything from this console, disable this weapon, and then let's leave. 
I'm sure we've all had enough of this planet. <laughs> Agreed, Captain. Just to remind you that the weapon is disabled already. But we're still here for Intel, regardless, right. which these consoles do have, so. Cool. Okay. Um, how do you wish to disable it? Explosively? We do have. Oh, yeah, we still have the drone with us that we didn't use. Let's use it. We do. So we will. Or I could get into it. I could hack it again, too, and take what information I can get. Ooh, more hacking. Yeah. Before before we blow it up, yes. Yes. Okay. So how much uh, momentum do we have? Uh, you currently have three momentum. Okay. I'm going to use one of those. So tell you what, um, do roll uh, insight or no. In this instance, this would be a reason plus either reason plus engineering or reason plus security. Uh, this is going to be a difficulty one task. And however much you succeed by is how much extra data you get. Okay. Can I assist? Um, um, I think in okay. this instance, it's going to be him ja literally plugging himself into the computer. Into it. Yeah. And <laughs> with my brain, if I remember right, I give any reason task. Um, I immediately get two successes. Is that correct? Um, that I'm I trying to pull up your one. message to me. And this is why I like copying talent descriptions into your character sheet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should have done that. Uh, brain. No, that's all memes. I can't see anything through there. Any tasks using reason? Uh, let's see. The character gains one automatic success okay. on a task using reason. Okay, so okay. you automatically succeed. Now it's just how much extra much. do you get? Gotcha. Okay. Okay. And I will use one momentum. So, because I'm going to drain this thing as much as I can. Hit. Okay. Um, so that is two extra successes. Um, and you've already used your determination, so you don't get that again. So, okay, so you get three... Uh, two extra successes, so you get two momentum out of the deal. And you learn that this um, planet, uh, the planet's construction is un, the species is unknown. Like, even from those who have, uh, who had settled it recently, uh, that species was known as the Yalexi. And the, who have maintained a fairly, well, they had maintained a fairly strong, um, it's hard to call it an empire. It's more like um, a black market, sort of like a evil Ferengi style alliance in this area of space. And this planet was where a particularly uh, cutthroat branch of the organization had used their uh, the planet's natural um, or natural power fields to create a pocket sort of like a, their own little mob house, which was primarily unassailable for many, many uh, decades. However, the Borg came, and like all things that the Borg touch, well, they die. Well, they get assimilated. Although the planet itself was not assimilated, as the Borg could not actually understand the technology behind it. So the Borg sort of just left it alone, leaving the weapon systems and the whole system in general inert. Until the Zell recently decided that, hey, we have space travel once more. Oh, that planet is free. Let's take it again. And here you are. Um, so, you have gained that much information. I will be sure to upload a, a relevant document about this later. Okay. Time to disregard all of that and blow it up. <laughs> I mean, you've got you have already spent time preparing the demolitions, um, and pretty much anywhere in this bunker is going to take it out. So I'm the only um, thing I the only question I have is because you're in a munitions bunker, how big do you want to make the boom? Not big enough where it compromises the shuttle on the outside. Okay. I mean, well, 
Cool, sure. I also don't want to do too much damage to Zell troops on the surface. Okay. Uh, or not, what about not... the rest of the Zell in the bunker that were not captured by the transporter? Well, okay. Well, if the explosion is then going to be big enough to damage the, or probably kill them in the process, then let's disable some of these munitions before we actually blow the damn thing. Okay. Uh, or tell them just to get out of there. Uh, uh, because yeah, yeah. they are scared of us already. Yeah. I mean, listen, I, I still even I still want to minimize my presence here. So actually telling them, to, I, I know they know we're here, but I don't want to tell them to leave. Oh, no, we'll, 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 we'll rattle them a little bit, make them think twice about actually trying to do this in the first place. All right. Uh, someone roll me uh, reason plus security. And if you have this focus in demolitions or munitions or even weapon systems, that would be handy here. And one person can assist. This will be a difficulty of one test because, well, you guys know your boom by now. We don't have to be accurate. True. <laughs> Does anybody have any of those uh, possible no, random focus? No, not really. Not the focus. Mm -hmm. My score is okay. So I can I can take it. Yeah, go for it then. All right. All right. Security. Okay, you get yeah. one momentum out of the deal. Uh, Erkin, you point to a rather convenient-looking um, load-bearing structure. <laughs> that looks shiny. Yeah. Blow that up. Yeah, lots of uh, gauges, dials, and uh, scary-looking red buttons, and say, hey, that looks important. And away from most other things that look like they might explode as well. The drone, Scrappy, whistles cheerfully as it heads towards the destination, and then cheerfully begins a countdown. I'm oh, assuming the oh, count... Wait. Sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. I I'm assuming the countdown is long enough for you to make the exit that you wish. Most oh definitely. Yeah. How do you wish to make your exit? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us to leave. Is there a back entrance to this bunker, or is this just the end? There, There is a one way in, or there are two entrances, one on either side of the bunker. Uh, a quick scan of your tricorder shows that they have called in uh, reinforcements who are now on the other side of the bunker. So both exits are currently guarded. Uh, well, I guess we'll just beam back to the shuttle then. All right. I'm, we're late enough in the in the night that I will let that happen without incident. We cut away from the. Uh, we zoom out to the exterior of the bunker. Uh, surrounded by several Zell troops that are slowly going in. Uh, one of the doors opens. Three host or three Zell zealous run out, yelling, "Don't shoot! Don't shoot! Run! Run! Run!" followed by a ka -chunk, as the bunker proceeds to no longer exist in one piece. And you guys appear back on the shuttle. Well, time for uh, if Erkin's well enough to actually fly us out of here, now this is the time we make our leave. Go ahead and comes the black sheet, then the Nighthawk to prepare a departure. All right. Uh, uh, Mr. Erkin, so at this point, the firefight in orbit has uh, ceased. Um, most of the uh, Zell, the Zell, the smaller Zell ships, the frigates, have been destroyed, and the Dreadnought ha is in full retreat. Uh, however, they have la landed enough ground troops to secure what remains of the structure and the uh, what is now apparently a bit of a stalemate because the Vitars hold space hold space superiority but they no longer have the troops needed to push the ground any further how do you wish to make your escapes slow and stealthy or are you just going to go like a bat out of hell I think punching it's a the more urgent solution okay yeah I'm not even going to have you roll then. You're just go right, red button, boom. <laughs> As you depart into orbit, uh, 
which is out here. So all the small ships went bye-bye. Uh, they took out a carrier, a few more of these guys. But space superiority is still well in the hands of the Vitars. As the shuttle... ...books <coughs> it. <laughs> because cool guys always run from explosions. Yeah, in slow motion. <laughs> and they wear jumpsuits with glittery that. rhinestones. Uh, uh, sorry, what was that? Oh, sorry. I thought we were making a Lonely Island joke. I wasn't, but I'm very. I do appreciate good Lonely Island humor. <laughs> Go ahead and have the Nighthawk move to. Intercept the shuttle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You swoop and grab. Okay, and. Erkin, you bring the shuttle in in a very controlled fashion. What do you wish to do next? Because there is still the looming... Uh, uh, I'd like to go to sick bay. That sounds like a good idea. I think Mr. Coax is going to escort you there himself. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, do we still have these... Zell and storage? I mean storage. They are still definitely... <laughs> yeah. you, you walk through the transporter room ice. and you see yeah. Zell, she's going back and forth on the little levers, make, trying to keep them stabilized. Yep. Uh, you currently have, I believe there were seven patterns in the buffer. She is utilizing I'd, both transporter rooms to achieve this function. I'd like to get in the transporter room, materialize at least uh, the lieutenant here. Okay. So we're going to be here those guys are no longer here. Who wishes to attend the captain? I'm not hearing a lot of volunteers. I will join. Okay. So that is the captain. That was Mr. Poran. Uh, we have Her interrogation. <laughs> okay. And so, a quick press of the buttons, and all of a sudden, the lieutenant appears. Uh, the first thing he does is reach for the pistol in his holster, realize it's not there, look around, and says, Inquiry, where am I? Follow-up inquiry, who are you? The Federation Mission Nighthawk. I am Captain Sengrel. Ah, star... Federation Starfleet. Yes, I was informed of your presence from uh, the from Commander Tree. I was hoping that we could meet under more peaceful circumstances, but you apparently had other plans. I understand the way that it may seem, but time, as you already know, time is of the essence. So I'm going to motion him over to the wall panel, so and actually let him know about the actual state of the battle so far and how they're kind of at a stalemate here. And I'm going to tell him that, again, the Federation didn't necessarily want to take sides, and we are remaining neutral, but at least the weapon that was based upon this planet can really fall into either anybody's hands. So I am offering my services once more as a mediator. At this point in time, no one necessarily has to know exactly what happened, but we could still try to clear up the, the grievances between you two. It doesn't necessarily seem like this is going to be an easy solution for either. So why don't we try to sue for peace right now, while the iron's still hot? I see. I see, Captain. Um, now, sorry, I zoned out very briefly. Did you tell him that you've neutralized the main weapon? Oh, yes, I did. Okay. I did. Yep. I'm definitely admitting that. Yeah, that thing's gone. I see. So the strategic value of this planet is no longer as a crucial as it once was. Captain, if you could please use, utilize your transporter technology to beam me to um, the Commander Tree's flagship. I am in... I believe that, that, she, that it is still functional. I shall relay your information and attempt to come to a conclusion. That's all I ask, by all means. Very well. Energize. Very well. 
And as we are um, getting, oh, uh, sorry. All of them are just hurt. All of them are just the lieutenant. All of them. Well, I mean, you, know, you know, the rest of them are still in the buffer too. We might as well send the rest of them with them. Okay. You see a sigh of relief on Zell. <laughs> that uh, she vanishes, or he vanishes, and we are going to. Um, just because we are dragging on far longer than usual, I'd like to cut to the end of the session, if that's okay, since we are at a peaceful stalemate, which is probably the best outcome one could hope for the session. Which eventually, which will see the. Uh, which sees the USS Nighthawk and the USS uh, Black Shield limping back to Deep Space 15 for repairs. And we are going to have a quick conference room debrief. And from and, uh, from there, we should end the session, I believe. Conference room debrief. Okay, Bashir is not there. <laughs> Truel is... as is the other folks. Okay, um, at this point, everyone is present, including Mr. Paran and Miss Nadan. And Alec has somehow vanished because I can't click right. There we go. No, I'm, I'm still there. Now there's right. two of me. Oh, yes. <laughs> Profits take the wheel. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Commander Chul is once a parade. <laughs> uh, Commander Chul looks at the lot of you and goes, "This mission has exceeded all possible ex all possible parameters, given what I was expecting." Well done, Captain. No need to thank me. We did what we were supposed to do. Mm. You should really thank your rest the rest of your crew. They have proved themselves quite capable, and they're far sturdier than I than I'm sure either of us could have ever anticipated agreed I shall put them in for commendation in my log however thank captain you, Commander. oh thank you no thank you you've survived situations far harsher than what was expected in these in this mission's parameters well done and he'll look back to the captains and girl captain as my ship is will be out of commission for the next two weeks pending repairs I would I believe that they would be best suited to be under your command at least for the time being and he looks back at Lieutenant Peran and gives you a look that you know he means what he says at least for you <laughs> I nod my head <laughs> if that is acceptable of course Captain We always have room. Welcome aboard. Thank you, sir. Wonderful. Now, with that out of the way, I need to go and talk to your chief engineer and wondering why he's putting disco balls on my ship. <clears throat> yes! <laughs> yeah. And with that, we are going yeah. to bring the session to a close. I just so, have one question yep. for Captain Stigraw before we close up. Of course. Yeah. Um... Sir, what are we going to do with these uh, primary bearing and feed couplings that we took off of that weapon? I mean, we're going to put them in, the, in storage with the rest of our... Brought our, our super oddities. weapons? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll go with the quartermaster, but I think we're... I'll go with the quartermaster, but I think we're starting to run out of room. Deep Space 15 has lots. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. yeah I'm going to trust this stuff there. Yeah, I know. That's, that's, that's funny. Oh, see, we should have taken, like, when we did the upgrade, we should have taken those extra rooms, and we could have got the Hall of Super Belt weapons. <laughs> right. Uh, now, if we can hook these couplings up with the nuclear device. I'm... Yeah, that's it. We're just going to put them all together and crack. Duct tape them all together. What's yeah. the worst that could happen? <laughs> Tag it and bag it, you know, put it into storage. Put security on it, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now I'll bring the session to a close. So thank you all. This has been a longer session than normal, and for that I apologize, but it was a good one. And so I, uh, w uh, the USS Nighthawk shall return Thursday, December the 5th. So on behalf of myself and my players, thank you all for listening, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>